suggest that you can Mario this time. No, I'm mad at you. I don't want to be Mario. Why are you mad at me? Oh my god. I'm so pissed about his dark materials. Yeah, I don't want to be Mario anymore. So just, hi guys, welcome back to the I'm Very Passionate podcast. That is the second time I've said that today because we've already recorded this segment and it disappeared. Actually, so, this is the first time you said that today. Oh, well, Mario I was Mario the it. first time. You're on my shit list. Don't start. Oh my God. We <laughs> recorded already our opinions about his dark materials and Mario got to see the full crazy angry Jessica because I blame Mario. Oh my god, I it's do. not my fault. It's 1,000. I never would have been exposed to this world and had this many feelings about one person. You committed. I committed for you. Yeah, and I appreciate it. Yeah. But you can't like, that's like saying I agree to drive you to the airport and then on my way back I crashed my car. Yeah, and I'm going to so it's your you. fault. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was she really? Yeah. No. I my mom lost her life. best friend because of that. Not really. Not like in real life. I wouldn't do that. Oh. But like, yeah. In real life, my, best, my mom second, lost her best friend because of that. In a second. I don't believe you. No, she really is. You do shit like this all the time. I'm dead yeah. serious. Her swear, name's Alicia swear, Johnson. Swear on his I swear on my iPad. Okay. All right. I believe you. My mom lost her best friend because my mom's mom That's died. Extreme. And so she drove us to the airport. And on the way back, she got into a car accident. Did she die? No. She but okay. she lost her car. And so That's she extreme. blamed my mom for it and they stopped being friends. That's extreme. Yeah. I don't like that. That's weird. In my brain, I'd be like, man, if I didn't fucking drive Mara to the airport, I wouldn't be in this position. Yeah. But I'd never be mad at you about it. Mm-hmm. They're not sure. Yeah. His dark material. Watch it, guys. His dark materials. Really quickly, we do want to touch on the inauguration because today is the Super Bowl. Right. And I have to go do stuff for that. She does. Um, the inauguration is great, except for Lady Gaga. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> We're so similar, but so dissimilar. <laughs> we talked, so in our first our first time going around, we talked about each of the performers. And how um, I felt like they were very intentional from Biden's team. They had a LGBTQ representative. They had a brown person, which was J-Lo. They had Garth Brooks, but I honestly keep forgetting he was there. Same. Um, I was like, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they had Amanda Gorman as the, like, poet. as the poet spoken word. And it was amazing. It was so good. Yeah. It was so good. And then we talked about Kamala being sworn in by Sonia Sotomayor. Oh, such a big, heavy moment for me. It that was, was amazing. A- incredible. Um, and then Biden's speech being very, eh. I wasn't moved. Like, when, when I remember when Obama gave his speech at his inauguration, I cried. But Obama is a an orator by nature uh, and a writer so by nature. Yeah. He's so good. I think it's unfair to compare them. Their I skill don't. level in that area is not the same. No, I, I, no, no, no. Sure, but at the same time, when it comes to uniting the country, like, that's kind of your job as president. Um, yeah. Your job is to give speeches. It's not to, like, move people. Like, no, that's not fair. It's like, a you good can, leader. You cannot good compare leader Obama, people. I think, to any president and as far as speaking goes. Like, he's incredible. He's the he's the best. FDR. Um, I don't know enough, so I can't argue oh, okay. that. Yeah, I don't know enough. He's one of the John best. F. Kennedy, he was very, very good. Very good. Very charismatic. Yeah. And that's yeah. why he died. Um, <sighs> but Obama's still alive. Thank God. And I thank God every day for that. I loved, we didn't talk about this, but I loved seeing, like, each of the previous presidents with their wives come in. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that was actually really cool. Like, even, I don't give a fuck about the Bushes, but I was like, oh, look at them. Like, they're here. Yeah. And then, like, he almost lost, like, Bush lost his scarf and he caught it. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to hold this on. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It was just a good time. And then, like, seeing like, the Clintons. Bill and Clinton. I yeah, yeah. loved Hillary's gigantic she bow. Incredible. Oh, my God. It was everything. And then Michelle and Barack came out, and they Michelle, looked amazing. She was wearing two different black designers, mm-hmm. and she looked stunning. With a huge statement belt. It was and beautiful. And there's a reason why it was all purple. Yeah. All of didn't, didn't, um... They all wore, like, a hue of purple and Hillary blue. wore, a, like, a, a royal bl- yep. purpley blue. Mm-hmm. She wore that purple. And then, who was the other one who wore purple? Kamala wore purple. Mm-hmm. Um... It was good. It was so good. It was beautiful. Very Uh, moving. I didn't expect to cry when Kamala got sworn in, but... I don't... At this point, I don't know when I'm crying anymore. So I just like (laughs) it. When it comes, it comes, and I have to deal. But, like, I... I'm not shocked that I cried during that part. Like, I'm really happy for her in that she broke this glass ceiling and is, is like... I cried when Trump left. 
Oh, I did not. I cried. I was like, thank, like such relief. I was like, oh my God, thank you. And I was talking to Sheena about this because Sheena said, you know, I used to wake up every morning and immediately check my news. To see if he because, was dead? No, not to see if he was dead, but like, what did he fuck up now? Because she's um, West Coast. So by the time she wakes up, he's had three hours to like fuck up the Oh, world. that's fair. So she's like, the day that he was out and Biden was in, she was like, I didn't wake up and check the news. Like, I feel like Biden's got it. Like, I don't need to be. And I was like, yeah, that's true. So I, when he left, I was just like relief. It's still my practice every morning to wake up and check the news. Um, just because I got into No, for her, of, the news for her. But for me, that's not normal. And I was doing the same thing. Right. No, but because of Trump's, and I, did, I was the same way. Like, I wake up and get, like check the news. And now when I wake up and check the news, like, I notice, like, there's a big difference. Yeah. Like, shit's it's not. Peace. Yeah. You feel okay. Well, not even that. Like. I feel okay. The nature of the stories are different. Like, yeah. it's more about, okay, this is what's happening, and this is why it's happening, or this is what should be happening, one versus of the most, Trump did this crazy-ass motherfucking thing. One like, of the most interesting things that I got from um, Disloyal, which is Michael Cohen's book, and he was the for, the formal, the former personal attorney to Donald Trump, was that he accepts his role in what happened, and he accepts Trump's role in what happened, mm-hmm. but he also thinks that the media should be held more accountable Because a lot of the reasons that Trump got elected was because of the media. Mm -hmm. They really focused on him. And I went back and I thought about it like the year that he was running. And I kept seeing stories in the news like, you know, entrepreneur running, like rally. Oh, my God. He said all these terrible things at the rallies. And, like, Trump would go back and be like, yeah, the news said that I said all these terrible things. So let's make sure we say them at the next one. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, he basically said, I don't, he said in a meeting about running for presidency and making sure that they had money because the Clintons were a machine. Mm -hmm. that he didn't need to put money towards press because he knew that he would get press because he was Donald Trump. And I was like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The press did kind of fuck this up for America as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're a part of it. Yeah, but it was, like, put into a really good perspective. And so I just really appreciated that. Anyway. I, um... I, I thought it was an okay thing. I was really scared. I thought something was going to happen. Me too. But Amanda Gorman is really the most important part of the so, inauguration for me. She's so good. She's really good. Yeah. She's so good. It was a beautiful, beautiful poem. If you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube. She got 2 million followers because of it overnight. She's wonderful. Because it was just so powerful and so moving. I know. I can't believe that a lot of people didn't know who she was. Yeah. I've seen her in things before. Like, mm-hmm. I knew of her. I can't say I that did I... did not. I can't say that I know her bodies of work, but, like, I've seen her in things. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think. I, I never... Feel like she was in a... She was in a Chelsea thing. Like, Maybe. on her show. I feel like she was on her show. I want to say that, like, I've heard people talk about her. Um, but, like, I... You know, I don't know her body of work, and I didn't know much about her. But she was very, very impressive. I knew who she was before she came... I did to not. ...to the inauguration, though. But I was very impressed. I thought that you did. I don't know why I got that impression. No, I was... I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Because I remember while watching it, I was like, oh, my God, are you watching this? And she's like, no, I rewound and I'm watching something else. And I was like, this is the best thing that's happened. I do remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was so powerful and so moving. And, like, I got chills and I felt what she was saying. Yeah. Um, she's and super effective. She's such a good performer, such a good writer. She wrote that. Like, mm-hmm. it's beautiful. I hope it lives on forever. I just think it's really incredible because you can write something extremely moving, but oftentimes you also cannot perform it. Yeah. Like, someone else will perform it. They can get across what you want. Did she you did both. ever do that in school? Like, spoken word performance? No. I would never have the courage to do that. I didn't have a choice. We had to do it for my gifted class. Mm. And so I just remember... I would have failed. I did okay. No, I, I wouldn't have done it. Um... Why? It's not writing a poem. It's you're reading a piece of, like, writing. Like, like I wrote from Harry Potter. I wrote, I did the scene from where um, Cedric dies in book four of Harry Potter. And then we also did the scene from Jurassic Park where somebody dies. Um, but, like, you just, it's called dramatic reading. I did dramatic reading for Julius Caesar. I played the wife and him when they were talking about, like, what it meant to go off to war. I did that, but that was a play, so it was different. It was drama. I was oh, in okay. drama, so it was different for me. At one time we had to write like personal stuff and like she just said go and write about personal stuff stuff that shaped you and we were like great okay write it and then she's like you have to pick one to perform well I took it really seriously and wrote a whole bunch of personal shit and I refused to perform and I think I got a zero for the assignment even though I did the work Wow. because I knew that if I got up there and read that to people like I didn't connect with anybody in high school not until like my senior year and I and I got a zero because I was like I'm not you didn't tell me that I would not have written these things. And she was like, yeah, but it came from the heart. I was like, they're personal. They were like really personal. Like they were fights between my mom and dad when I was four years old. 
and like stuff that was said. Like I never would have told wow. anybody those things because I just thought we were writing. It's one thing to write. It's another thing to share. Mm-hmm. So no, I just refused. I've never forgiven I probably her either. Too. I've never forgiven her because she didn't tell us that. It wasn't in our rubric. That's shitty. Mm-hmm. Fuck her. Oh, I don't even remember her name. I blocked her out. I remember she used to eat Too Faced, though. What? She would, like, constantly pull Too Faced out of her desk, twiddle on her tongue, and keep going. I don't know if she had a thing with, like, having bad breath. Like, I don't know what it was, but I always thought she was so fucking weird. That's weird. Can't you die from And then that? what else did she do? I don't know. She, um... We had to write about something really impressive, and I wrote about Mulan because I watched the movie, but then I found out she actually was, like, a real mythological kind of, like, creature. And so we had to submit our topics to be approved, and she approved my topic. I had it in paper, like, where she was like, yeah, this is great. Go with that. And then I did it, and she was like, this is not what I wanted. And I was like, I can't win in your class. What did she want? She wanted, like, a real person, and she wasn't real. And I was like, but she's real to a culture. Like, I don't understand. I hated that class. She was really weird. Wow. And I love English language arts, too. She was also the drama teacher, though? No. She just had us do dramatic readings. Oh, got you. When we were reading about Shakespeare. Which I think is pretty normal. Like, most people who teach Shakespeare have you do a dramatic reading at some point. Because it is part of the whole package. Did you ever read a separate piece? I don't think so. Okay. We read it in my ninth grade, like, English class. What is that about? It's, like, set in, like, World War II, and it's, like, these two boys that, like, no, uh... No, uh-uh. We, we read, like, traditional old-school stuff. Yeah, and this is older. Way. I mean, we read, like, Shakespearean stuff, but we, this is... We read the books that, like, you saw on TV shows. Like, that, you know, when they were like, oh, you need to read Romeo and Juliet, or, like, you need that. to read, um... I forget all of them that we read. Mockingbird. Yeah, we, we read, read all that. of that traditional stuff. We didn't really read, like, non-traditional stuff. I mean, the, this is, like, an American classic, but, um, it's just not one that... A well-known one, then. Yeah. We did a lot of the well-knowns. Um, but essentially, it's, like, super gay. Like, super oh, gay. Oh, no. Hardaway would have never done that. Well, that's why I was like, we're reading this? Yeah, Hardaway would have Because, like, it was, pr- like, it was, like, very, like, homoerotic. Like, Mm-mm. it was about, like, these two 15-year-old boys at a, at a private school be, being best friends and one clearly being in love with the other one. The, and the gay other- culture at Hardaway was so fucking toxic. I don't think that would have a control over what the teacher teaches, though. But I think it came from the teachers. Oh. Yeah. And that's not a part of the curriculum. You don't have to read that. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, well, no, this was required. I can guarantee you that it's not even required to this day. That book? School. Yeah. Probably not. It might have been just the teacher. She's like, I want to teach this book. And so she did. I remember, do you, there's this poem called The Scarlet Ibis, which is a bird. We, d- yeah, 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 I was trying to think if we'd read that. We did read a book about rape culture. Oh, shit. A, a short story, and it was really interesting because it was, like, people around the water cooler talking about rape. Oh, fuck. And how everyone, like, rape fantasies. Like, rape fan- like sexual rape. Yeah, some women have rape fantasies. No, I get that, but you you studied that in school? And, yeah, in a book. Book. People talking casually about, like, rape fantasies. This was in my AP English class. And the, the message that, and it was from first person perspective, and she talked about how uncomfortable she was. And Mr. Fletcher was like, did anybody notice that? What do you think that was? And it, like all the girls were like, oh, she clearly had been raped. And that's why she was uncomfortable. And those other women had never, ever been put like in a sexual position mm-hmm. where they fell out of control. control. And so he was like, great. And the men were like, I don't get it. I just thought like we were reading about rape fantasies. And I hated high school. Yeah. But I mean, to be fair to guys, guys are raised a certain way that they don't really perceive that sort of thing. And I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, I don't approve of it, but like, I wouldn't expect them to pick up on something like that if they're not taught that, you know? I hated high school. I, I did too. I hated people I went to high school with. I liked person. my friends and that was it. Same. I hated the whole, the whole thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Should we wrap this up now? Yeah, I guess so. Um, sorry. That was the kind worst of... intro ever. Oh my God. Stop. It was. It's fine. No, it's okay. We can say that. It was bad. It's fine. We loved the inauguration. JLo shouldn't have said, let's get loud. In my opinion, Mario doesn't care. Gaga shouldn't have been there. I love In my her. opinion. I loved her there. I thought it was great. My mom loved Gaga. I had to explain House of Gaga to her. Because she's mm-hmm. like, is everything she does intentional? Yes, mom. Every The meat dress was intentional. All of it's Ugh. intentional. 
Yeah, it's kind of gross. That was so gross. That was if so I didn't gross. talk too long, Mario wasn't impressed. I was just happy not to see a Cheeto with floppy hair. Yeah, but they did not hairspray his hair. That's all I could focus on during his speech. I don't even care about his that. His hair was flying everywhere. And I was like, guys. I, did, I didn't even notice it. I didn't care. Nobody didn't think to spray down Grandpa before they let him out and talk Why? to everybody. That's not important. His hair is not important. What's important is that the Cheeto is gone. That's what's important. Yeah, no, that's true. I'm Nobody cares. Like, we're not focusing on superficial things. Have you been paying attention to the shit with his uh, his impeachment trial no um apparently he released all of so like his lawyers have quit twice now Mm -hmm. um so like his current lawyers have released all of their arguments Mm -hmm. and congress already has arguments against them Mm -hmm. and they're trying to get him to testify and he's refusing because they he like they all know if he testifies he's going to incriminate himself he can't refuse he can he did they're gonna keep going until he has to they can make him can they Mm -hmm. i hope he gets subpoenaed i hope he gets subpoenaed and forced to talk. Did you see that Biden removed him from briefings? I, I heard they were talking about it. No, it's know. done. He's the first president in history where they're like, literally, you have, you've breached um, security too many times while you were in office. You don't really know what's going on because you didn't read anything. Everybody read it to you or told you about it. Wow. So, and I will not call upon you for help because they give, like Biden, um, Barack still gets them. Clinton still gets them. I think the Bushes and some, they listed like all the presidents that still welcome it to help. And um, Biden was like, I will never go to him for advice. So <laughs> Yeah, not. I wouldn't either. So he was like, there's no need to well, keep giving him secure information. I thought, like, I knew they were wanting to stop it because they were afraid he would use it to sell. Or That's to, not how it was presented to me in the argument, but I could see that also being a reason. That was the only argument that I saw, was that they were afraid he was not a No, Biden, I think Biden had to, probably Biden had to explain it when it was done. He was like, that's not the only reason why. There are other reasons why. Because I think, like, he released information about the Middle, in the argument it said that he released information about the Middle East to Russia, and the Middle East was very, very pissed about it. But they, his argument was that, well, I don't read the briefing, so I didn't know that Russia wasn't supposed to know because people tell me about it. And so Biden was like, well, if you're not reading them, then you don't need to get them. And also, I'm not going to ask you for advice. Mm-hmm. You're removed from the situation. I wonder if, it, if a Republican son, like president comes back, if they can get him again. Like, give it back to him. No, uh-uh. I don't think so. I don't know who would. Uh, you, you know what my biggest fear now is? It's the worst fear ever. Is There's daughter. someone worse than Trump? No. Yeah. That might run for office one day and get it and really fuck Next it up. time. Yeah. Like, I'm so scared for next next election. And I'm, I don't think I've been scared election to election. I've been disappointed in not my candidate not winning. But, like, yeah, it's a little bit scary. It think. is. It is. Just because knowing that he's, or people like him are out there and have, like, big crowds of people who agree with them. Mm-hmm. Like, it's fucking freaky. Mm-hmm. And I'm not ready for 2024. I think, I, I think what needs to happen is that we just really need to take hate crimes very seriously and hate language and hate speech and make sure that America knows it's not okay. Mm-hmm. If we do that, then I think we're going to suppress them to even more because then it's not going to be acceptable for someone to say the things that he said to get elected. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the only way to avoid it from happening again. I think they should just rewrite the Constitution. But it is now... Oh, I say scrap the Constitution. It is now 1 o'clock. Mario's been here since 9.30. I have yeah. shit that I have to do. All right. Um, please listen to our review of His Dark Materials. I apologize in advance because I get really loud <laughs> and I get really pissed and I... Go off. Refuse to listen to Mario's explanation about anything. Yeah. She did. Happened. She really but you're did. you're wrong. You're wrong. I kept trying to talk and she just kept talking. I was like, oh, yeah. okay. I was real obnoxious. I'm so oh, sorry. It's fine. You know what? Don't listen to it. Listen to it. <laughs> listen to it. We need the listens. No, you really don't. <laughs> we do. Listen to the beginning. Listen to the end. Download it. That show or support send an email, but like skip his dark material. Listen to it. It's good. It's so good. I love it. I cannot wait for season three, part one. No, I'm joking. I'm, I'm totally stab joking. You in the eye. I'll stab you in the eye. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Enjoy this review. Bye. I saw it recording. And I hit stop. Maybe it'll appear. Maybe it'll appear. You want to just move with his dark materials? And if it doesn't, we'll do a quick recap again about the inauguration. Okay. Can't let this bring us down because if not... I'm going to be... I'm so scared now. Hey, everyone. We're back. We're having a heart attack because it looks like our whole inauguration thing may not have recorded. It may not, but we'll see. We'll see. We're crossing our fingers. Also, before we get into the second season of his dark materials... For the last two weeks, Mario has been encouraging me to watch WandaVision and telling me that it's okay that I don't need to binge WandaVision. It's so good. Did you start it? I fucking finished it and I'm pissed that I'm not binging it. (laughs) 
I'm not that person. It's part of the fun. It's not fun to trying me. Trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. It's not on. fun to me. I have no patience. You only have three more episodes, girl. I, mm-mm. I don't, and I'm not going to watch them until all three are up. That's fine. Mm-mm. That's fine. I, I tried. I tried it your way. It was wrong. Do you know who that guy was at the end? I've only... Oh, I haven't seen last night's episode. Oh. Yeah. I've saw the one before that. Things are getting weird. I'm not, I told you I'm not watching until That's they're fine. all up. That's so fine. four episodes to go. Okay, cool. Then you... But you saw the kids, right? Mm-hmm. I saw her give birth to them. Yeah. yeah. Billy is one of my favorite superheroes. I'm so excited. I know. When I saw, and I saw it, I was like, oh, this is Mario's like shit right here. This is the kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's um, going to be great. I, yeah. I just... Um, we will review again in the future. Look yeah. out for it. Because I'm not going to watch it until it's all up there. That's it's funny. one of those things where I need to watch. I need all of the information right I think it's there. our review is coming in March because that's from the last episode. Yeah, is, I think But that's I'm not positive. Scheduled. I'd have to send my, check my calendar. So his Dark Material season two, um, another show that I wish that I hadn't watched until season three was fully released. <laughs> That shit pisses me off. I told you it was But gonna... I, I told you I didn't like that, though. I told you, like, even Game of Thrones, I don't think I watched until, like, season six was up. Uh-huh. Because I, I need it all. Like, once yeah. I get enveloped in a world, I it's so hard for me to transition from, like, normal to that world. And I just want to be in that world until it's over. Mm-hmm. So His Dark Materials, She's really gone. good. But I'm so pissed that, like, I have to wait for season three. Yeah, I wonder when it's going to come out, It's though. very anticlimactic, and I wasn't expecting it. I thought there was going to be some sort of, like, big thing that happened, because something big happened at the end of season one. Mm-hmm. Asriel, like... I mean, a big thing did kind of happen. No, but, like, more... There was more action in season one. I mean, we got, like, yeah. a gunfight, and I, we got, like, you know, the witch being tortured. But. I will say, season two slash The Subtle Knife is really about setting up everything yes. for the final season slash The Amber Spyglass. Because it introduces a lot of concepts and ideas that weren't in the first book. Um, and okay. I'm so excited for it because they did it so well. Also, John Ma- John McAvoy? James McAvoy? James Mac- John McAvoy is completely different. James McAvoy was such a big draw for me. And he's and barely so far, two. I've seen him at the beginning of the season and at the end of the season. That happened with season one and his half. And more so in season... I saw him more He'll, in season he one. He should be in season three a lot because he's literally leading the charge against heaven. I don't care for Mrs. Coulter. I love her even more now. I hate her. I hate her with every fiber of my being. Really? I think she's one of the worst people I've ever encountered in a fake world. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can get into that. Yeah. But She's for, worse than Lord Voldemort. I said it. Fight me. I hate her. I don't agree at all. I, no. Uh-uh. I hate her. She... The things that everything I... Everything she does is so calculated. The, yes, but that doesn't mean that that's a good thing. No, but it's all for the good of her daughter. Fine, but I haven't seen that yet. And that's right love. Now, yeah, yes, you did. You saw it in the show. You just didn't realize you saw what? it. What? What? When she released Lee Scoresby because she knew he would protect her if she came in, if he came into contact before with Lyra before she did, that's the only reason she saved him was out of love for Lyra. And everything else that she did? In regards to what? Like, just who she is. Like, the way that she acts and moves through the world. Like, the thing about Mrs. Coulter that I do appreciate, especially the one scene between her and Boreal. Boreal. Mm -hmm. Like, he said, we're your equals. And she had poisoned him and was like, I'm not your fucking equal. That kind of shit is great. Fine. I love that shit. But overall, she's a fucking nightmare and I hate her. I hate Mm -hmm. her. I I hate her for torturing the witch. That mm-hmm. was so difficult for me to watch. I don't know why, because it's not even like I'm like truly attached to that character. Yeah, like at all. Like you barely. But I was like, you're just you're all God. You're awful. Mm-hmm. And but I do. I, I will recognize about Mrs. Coulter that I don't think I see the big picture because again, Mario has read all of the books. I've not read any. I think I've read the first six chapters of the first book on audiobook, mm-hmm. and I still don't think I fully understand everything because mm-hmm. I, I think that's a read book, not an audio book for me. But, um. Maybe everything will make more sense after the third season, but I decided this morning that, like, when season three drops, I'm not watching it until the last season is up, so my plan is, like, the first day that season three, episode one airs, mom is going back to season one, episode one, and then I'm going to go all the way through. Work. I, need, I think I need it. Do it. I'm, I might do that, too. But I'm going to watch it as it comes out because I'm obsessed. No, with it. I cannot. I, I need cannot. To, I just cannot wait to see what's potentially going to happen in it, this. But from, I'm not... I think years of binging have ruined me from, like, ep, uh, weekly releases. I think also knowing what is going to happen in general makes it not as painstaking for me. 
Maybe. Because that's like, true oh, for WandaVision. Like, you kind of know where that story is going to end up. I mean, the only thing that I watched this year that was like that was The Flight Attendant. And I I didn't like it. Oh, did you see she got nom- she got nominated? No. For a SAG and a Golden Globe. Oh, word. So she got nominated. And then the cast and ensemble got nominated. Maybe she got an Emmy? She cried. Aww. She did an interview where she's like, I like never would have imagined that this would happen. Good for her. Yeah. Good for her. She, she bought the rights before she'd even read the book. Oh, wow. Because she said she felt so connected to the cover. She said there was something, like, magical that happened when she saw it and was like, you need to see if you can get the rights to this book. Wow. Before she'd even read it. I know she owned the rights. Good for her. That's how you can produce it. You have to get the rights before Reese Witherspoon. Well, I didn't realize she was a producer. I told you, this was her thing. I know, I just don't This is before Big Bang. Oh, I love fan. Kaylee Cuoco. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, okay. Good for her. I love Kaylee Cuoco. I'm Cuoco. happy for her. Yeah, she's one of my favorite people on this planet. She loves animals. Speaking of animals... Okay. Demons. No. <laughs> I'm also, I'm so sad by the lack of, like, polar bears. I loved the polar bears in the first one, but I'm assuming they have, like, a big role in the third one. No. Oh, no, because with, what's his name? Yorick. Yorick. He- Yorick, I mean, he, he has a thing that you're not going to like that he <sighs> does. Um, But it makes sense. So, like, it makes sense. Fine. I just, I, you know, the polar bear fight, that whole thing. It was great. I run everything, but like the lead up, everything about it, the manipulation. I loved that scene, like that chunk so much. It was my favorite, one of the favorite things of um, season one. Mm -hmm. And so I saw York for like, what, 30 seconds in one episode this time. Yeah. Like it's just not, it's not enough. He's not a big character in the books either. I know, but I love Like in the first book, he's very instrumental in Lyra. Yeah. Like becoming Lyra Silvertongue and... Really learning um, how to... Mario didn't believe that I'd finished, so he was quizzing me. And I, you asked me, did you find out Laura, uh, Lyra's name? Right. And then I was like, oh, whatever I said, Lyra. You said Lyra Silvertongue, and I said, no, that's not her name. Yeah, it's not, because she's the mother of all before the fall, Eve. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I did know that. Sorry. I just... That's not a name to me. That was a prophecy. Right. But that's... She's like, Eve. They want to know her true name. Yeah. And it was Eve. And I'm really excited about that. Yeah. I don't know if, like, you're getting the parallels with that, but, like... Uh, yeah. The fact that Mary Malone is a serpent. Yeah. Um, because the serpent is supposed to be the devil. I, I will say, her back. Mary Malone. I love Mary Malone so Mary much. Mary Malone is where it's at, man. I love her. I, I love l- everything about her. I love her hair. I love her accent. I love the way she thinks. I love the way she's intuitive. Uh-huh. I love it so much. The way that she kicked that guy out of her office for trying to use it as defense. Yeah. She was like, no, she's everything that I would want to be. I was apprehensive about her casting at first. No, I like Because she's not how I pictured Mary Malone. But yeah. I I love this actress so much. Can I ask a question? No. Okay. No, what's... The, sec- the sectors, the s- specter. Uh-huh. Okay. I feel like I've missed something. The specters are just a thing that exists in that world, in Chittagatse. No. no. They, well, they come out into Chittagatse, because Chittagatse is kind of like the main world that all the worlds are tied to. Yeah. So that's the one, like, all doors lead there. Mm-hmm. And so when somebody uses a subtle knife to create a doorway, a, um, between the worlds, there's, like, emptiness, uh-huh. and the specter comes from there. So every time you open into another world. A, a is specter is born. in the show? Yes. When? Um, in the very, in the episode where they um, explain with the subtle knife, uh-huh. they say that's how specters come. I missed that completely. Um, I remember him showing him how to open it, what the strings would feel like. I remember him showing him how to close it. It's the beginning I, of episode four. I just don't remember that conversation. I remember, it's not a conversation. It's a narration at the very beginning of the episode explaining the subtle it. knife. I missed it. Then. Um, it's, it's Yakimo Paradisi explaining it. Um, and you also said that you love the children of Titagatsi. In the books I do. In yeah, because the, they're kind of assholes. Well, mm-hmm. they're they're assholes in the book too. Yeah. But like, I don't know. They're they're more tribal. They're less humanized in the book, mm. and it makes them feel like more of a threat. Whereas in this, they made they, they went out of their way. They come off like bullies. They came off as bullies, but also, I think changing Paolo to Paola mm. kind of changed that balance too. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that he's a boy doesn't really matter, but no, but it does. You're talking um, about the way people perceive feminine and masculine energy in this type of situation. But then on top of that, they went out of their way in the season to make 
them be kids and like Mary comes in and is like well, let me help you find your adults yeah. and they just wanted a hug because they haven't seen an adult in no so I long. definitely felt different so they about really them. humanized them in the show which I liked in but I also book, didn't, didn't like do. in the books they didn't so they're a lot more tribal like we're gonna fucking kill you well yeah there was that one scene where they looked like that and I was I'm very defensive about Lyra uh-huh. oh I love Lyra I love Lyra so much I love Will and Lyra I like, like they're Will. both so good no I definitely like Will but I'm definitely more drawn to Lyra she's like She's so good. She's, She's such a good actress. Me. She's incredible. Um, like I better than um any of the kids in Harry Potter were at that age. Absolutely. Like this absolutely. Is so good. Her dad is um Father McPhail. Who's uh, that? The the guy who becomes Cardinal. The bald guy, who becomes like the Pope, but isn't the Pope, and he burns his hand over the fire. That's her father. That's her father in real life. The actor. Oh, I was like in the book. I thought it was Lord Azrael. No, it is Azrael. Okay, but um, that's her father. So I wonder if like he just like helped teach her how to act at a very young age or something. Well, he did because she was also the little girl it. from Logan. I don't think I've seen that. She, um, it's where he, like Wolverine. It's like in a post. It's like a Sophie and Yeah, I don't watch those. It's apparently amazing. I refuse to watch because I hate Logan. I um, not um. But she plays X twenty three in it, and it's very good. Apparently, I watched the newer X Men's only because Jennifer Lawrence. Right, right. That's it. And I watched the old ones, I think, because of Darius, and I couldn't tell you what happened. No worries. I also don't love Halle Berry, so. Okay. Another reason for me not to even give a shit. I think Halle Berry's very overrated um, as an actress. I haven't seen really anything with her other than X-Men. The only movie I'd possibly be interested in, you haven't seen Monsters Ball? No. The only- Back to the to the show, though. Yep. Yeah, so, about? the kids were a lot more tribal and... I don't know. They, they they were a lot more threatening in the show, or I mean, in the in the book, than in the show. And so maybe that's why I liked them so much. Yeah, I didn't um, like the way that they tried to manhandle Lyra because everything with Tulio, the brother who they took the knife from. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just feel like it was a lot more focused on. Whereas this is kind of like, oh, this thing happened and he died. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot more focused on in the book, and it was a bigger deal and. It really, in the grand scheme of things, isn't important, and it's I get not. why they minimize yeah, it. Yeah, that didn't feel weird to me at all watching it. Um, but, but I don't know. It was just. It's, I expected the kids of Chittagatse to have a bigger role because of the way that you talked about them, and, and they do in the book. Yeah, in the in the show they don't. But I can see why they're not really that necessary. They're kind of like a side story. Mm-hmm. They're not really integral. They don't impact the plot other yeah. than pushing. You Lyra could remove and Will. them completely out, and they still kind of could find a way to resolve it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. They're not. They're not absolutely necessary um but i do have like many summaries of each episode Let's go. I, I was thinking about doing like two at a time and us reacting to that sure. or talking about that because we did kind of just talk about certain things um uh, but essentially the first episode will and lyra meet and agree to work together mm-hmm. i was really excited about this because i don't know they're two of my favorite characters and they're you finally look up his name before you keep going the actor who plays him the dad oh john perry or the actor who plays the, dad? the actor who plays the dad adam scott Adam Scott, yep. Um, and then the witches decide to become in the conflict, uh, become involved with the conflict, and they send Lee Scoresby to go it's look for Stanislaw. Stanislaw Scream. Not Adam Scott. It's it's something Scott. It is. Yeah, keep going. Um, it's the guy. It's Moriarty. Moriarty, yeah. Um, he said, So they send Lee Scoresby to go find Stanislaw Screaming because it's important. Um, Mrs. Coulter interrogates the witch. Andrew Scott. Andrew Scott. There we go. Um, and it was trying to get Lyra's true name. I hated that scene so much. It was intense. Because she was pulling out the witch, the, the cloud pine out of her skin. It was Which is what allows worst. witches to fly. It it was just terrible. I mean, it was a good torture scene. Yeah, I bet I don't like torture scenes oh, anyway. Um, but Ruta, the badass that she is. I love Ruta Scardi. And the actress who plays Ruta Scardi is really good. She's actually one of Azriel's like, former lovers. Yeah. Um, but she goes and... In their culture, they have this figure called Mama Aga, who, mm-hmm. when it's their time to die, they call out to her, and, and another so you witch, see that, yeah. another witch comes and pretends to be her and kills her, mm-hmm. per her request. Um, and so she does that, puts that her out of her misery, too. and then Will starts having visions about the knife because the knife is calling to him because it knows yep. he's the next bearer. Um, so they go to Will's world. They it meet. took me a second to figure out what that was, and they had to explain what the bear was for me to put it together. Oh, got you. Yeah, because I was like, a knife? Like, what's happening? Because that's not really explained up until what episode? Four? When Yeah, when they have to be like, oh, the knife. Yeah. Um, so they go to Will's world, and I something that's not in the books, but is in the movie, or in the show, is phones. Like, they don't have cell phones in the books, because it takes place in the books at a different time period than our current this time period. This is more period. modern in our They world. made it modern, so he has an iPhone, and I was like, oh, 
And she, and she even acknowledged, like, what is that? Because, yeah. like, in her world, they don't have cell phones. Yeah, they don't have technology like we and have it. Did you get that? I think there was a part in the movie or the show where she goes, did you get that from that screen? Or something like that. It's just so cute. Um, but they meet Mary and we're introduced to her. She's, like, a former nun who became a scientist. I love her. Which... She's one of my favorite characters. I, like, in looking back, I never made this connection. But now, like, in reviewing it and everything, like, it makes perfect sense that that type of person is the serpent. Because mm-hmm. the serpent, because she's supposed to play the serpent in this retelling of Adam and Eve with mm-hmm. Will being Adam and Lyra being Eve mm-hmm. and tempting them to accept knowledge. Um, and so she was tempting them. Or so like, the, in, it's it, in the Bible, the, the serpent is supposed to be Satan. Yeah. And At he's least, fallen yeah. out of belief and grace with God. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to tempt them into true knowledge. Um, and so she's a former nun, so she's lost her faith mm-hmm. with God and is now tempting them with knowledge of the because world. Because she's, she's focusing, her studies are dark matter. Exactly. And dust. And dark matter and dust are the same thing, but dark matter is also the thing that physicists, like, physicist? Physicist? Yeah. yeah. They use that kind of to be like, hey man, this is the building blocks of nature. Like, I'm so happy that you believe in God and like, we support that. But mm-hmm. like, at the same time, this is how shit happens. You yeah. know, it's the scientific explanation I behind it. love this. I, I love with the show how they had a fantastical thing to the scientific explanation because like dust, you find out is actually angels. When I freaked out, I freaked out when that happened. When I talked to her? Seven? What? Seven? Episode, no, episode six. When the, when the cave started talking to her yeah. and said, you need to go and do this. Yeah. Or you're like... And they were like, oh, and we're angels. And she's like, wait. And what did she say? It was so beautifully said. She's like, wait, so angels have played a role in the evolution of humankind. And they said, yes. And she said, why? And she said, out of revenge or out spite, of spite. Something like that. Because they were mad at the authority who's God. And then there was another um, thing that she said. And it was, oh, help me. It was beautiful. I loved it. Spirits are dark matter. Angels are dark matter. But so if dark matter is angels, then what they do is... How they exist is dust, but what they do is something else, reality. It was a quote that they said to her, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's great. I don't remember the quote, but I remember getting You remember the scene when she Uh, said it? Yeah, when the cave's talking to her. Yeah, that whole conversation is, there's a lot of talking in in season two. There's so much talking Yeah, I mean, it's really setting up everything for season two. It is, no, and and it's great, but like season one was kind of action. There was more action. Mm -hmm. Season two is setting everything up, so there is a lot of talking because you need to understand the dynamics between the characters. Mm -hmm. But like by far my favorite conversation of all time is the the one where Will and Lyra like talk about how they're best friends well um, she was asleep and heard him talk about it to her demon mm-hmm. i thought that was so cute it's also a very intimate thing and in his hinting at like them being adam and eve because yeah. you're not really supposed to talk or interact with somebody else's demon yeah. it's a very weird thing in their world yeah so i caught that too because that happened in episode um, like too typically much you only do it with your lover yeah because that's a part of your lover and so um that was oh that I have questions. So when we get to episode seven, be like, remember the question about Mrs. Coulter to me because it is episode why she seven. can control the things. No, no, no. I, oh. I figured that out. Like that's fine, but I have a question about that. Right. Something else in that, but also the conversation between Mary and Dark Matter was fucking incredible. Like With Mary and Lyra about, or Mary and the, the angels? Mary and the okay. angels, which is Dark Matter right. at, or dust, whatever you want to call it. I like that. Like as a physicist, that must have been like in oh shit moment for her and she did so fucking well in that scene because you can see like her trying to keep her composure but like she's shaking i have to ask the questions i have to know but like holy fuck dark matters communicating with me i'm doing what lyra did like it was one of my favorite scenes it's so good it's it's probably the best one of the best scenes in the whole show it might be the best for me i i loved it so much it was such a big moment for that character absolutely and i love Mary. like mary's Mary's just such a good character yeah you're gonna i think you're gonna like her even more in season three because what she does lyra and mary are my favorites like period across the board work and i have the same issue with andrew scott that you have with um with lin-manuel yeah Understandable. Because his his character um, is so similar to the way that Moriarty speaks when he's not having a manic episode or, like, a psychotic episode. Mm -hmm. Like, you know that there's stuff going on behind his eyes. So, I don't know if that's just his acting style. And I loved him as Moriarty, but, like, I feel like maybe that he wasn't. I mean, it fits fits for John Perry as well. It does fit for John Perry, but if if you've seen him as Moriarty, like, that's a huge thing about Moriarty. Mm -hmm. So... 
I it's been so long since I've seen the Sherlock. Sherlock is one of the best shows of all time. Um, so I really don't remember. I remember seeing him, and I remember seeing him like on the roof of a building or something. And <laughs> Sheen is actually reading Sherlock now, and she messaged me and she said, "I can never imagine Cum- uh, Benedict Cumberbatch being this man now." <laughs> Because she's reading the actual books. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty different. He's I mean, a weird guy. Oh, I love him. I like that he was like, my fans call themselves Cumba bitches. Please stop doing that. <laughs> you are not a bitch. <laughs> so um, from the meeting Lyra, um, or well, Lyra meets Mary and shows her the alethiometer. And then she connects her to the cave and Lyra shows her that she can communicate with it. And Lyra is like, or, or Lyra Mary. also comes in contact with Lord Boreal. Boreal. I don't know how you say his name. Yeah. Boreal. Yeah. Like, so the, like, uh, Aurora Borealis. Yeah. But this was right after she met Mary. Right. Because she was going back to see her again, right? No, no. She saw, she met him first. And then. At the museum. That's right. Yeah. And then, but also. Also, what a fucking douchebag. I hate him. Oh, I hate him. I'm so glad he died. I hate him so much. I'm so glad he died. I hate him, though. He is just an ambitious snake in the grass, and his demon is a snake, so it makes sense. Absolutely. He's like a fucking asshole. He really is. He's so entitled and just. And just like money, he is like the true definition of like power driven. Agreed. He wants the money, he wants the power. He's even trading relics in a world that he's not from yep. just to be like, I have this and no one else does. Yeah. Oh, he's gross. I hated him. And I loved when they went to Chittagatze. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of it. It's fine. And he looked so fucking out of place. And scared. And scared. And I was like, yeah, that's right. It's nice to see him put in this place. Yes, absolutely. Because monetary things don't mean shit. That's right. Then for your life, there's specters running around. And a woman is protecting you. And you look like shit. And you look like you can't sleep. And I'm so happy. I hope you die. And then (laughs) he he does. Sorry, but I'm glad you finally hate him as much as I hate I him. I hated him in the first season. Not no, as much as I do no. now, for sure. But, like, when you... Because I remember when we reviewed the first season, I was like, I fucking hate this Yeah, guy. and I, I was and like, you're like, why? why? And it's like, you'll see. <laughs> yeah. I just... <laughs> I just had deja vu. That's exactly what happened. Because I think your arms went out and your... This is your... I call it Mario's bulldog stance because he puts his arms on the table, elbows out, and he leans into the conversation. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I was like, you just wait. And I did, and I waited, and, and he's, he's a, a turd. I he's, hate him. Yeah, he's he's trash. I don't like him at all. Um, so this is something he's that's, the Tana Mojo of. Oh my god, and it's terrible to say, Tana. I love your video. She hates you. I'm joking. No, I. She's so trashy. I love her. I love trashy people. So this is something in the show that's not really featured in the books. Is what a lot more Mrs. Coulter. Really. Yes, um, because we don't see her manipulating her way through the magisterium, like being a woman in a man's world and getting what she wants. Right. And this is why I like her more, having seen this, because you really see the shit she deals with being talked down to as a woman and then grabbing them by the balls and being in control. Listen, and that's why I like her I, so much. I love that. I love that about a character. I really, really do. But she seems so evil and manipulated. Mm-hmm. And, and not even, like, I don't know. Like, I, it's one thing to have, like, your best interest in heart, but, like, play rules by a man's by a man's world. But there is nothing in this season that makes me feel like everything she was doing was for Lyra, except for letting these scores be go. But I still feel like that could have been like, oh, but I can find him, so I can find Lyra. I really hope that... You get to see that in the third book. I hope so too. Or the third series. Right now, I don't see third, her like you see her. Well, and that's because I've experienced the third series, the third book. Because in the mm-hmm. third book, you really see her broken down, crying over Lyra, asking her, "Why don't you? Love, I just want to be your mom. I just want to love you. I just want you to be a part of my life, or whatever." I have no feelings about that. Um, I know you just see every and all the care she takes for her. From to the try. first interaction she had with Lyra, though, she was such a manipulative mom. Yep. She tried to control everything about her. Of Absolutely. course, your child's not going to love you if you do that. I haven't been a presence in your life for 12 years, and now you want to come in and tell me that I have to look a certain way, act a certain way, dress a certain way, and then you don't even tell me that you're mom, mm-hmm. and then you tell me who my dad is? Like, no, yeah. bitch, I don't like you. There's nothing to like about you. Yeah. If I was Lyra, I'd be like, fuck you. And now yeah. she's, like, drugged her. And, and her Lyra's in- still like, fuck you. Oh, my God. Can we talk about what's Lyra's best friend's name? Yeah, we will at the end. Okay. Because <laughs> okay, so that actually is how... Talk about. I'm pretty certain there's like a button at the end of the audiobook of mm-hmm. book two mm-hmm. that has that exact scene. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it's hinting at what's happening or what's going to come. Yeah, I'm very curious to know. So this is something we don't see. We see her manipulating Father McPhail, who um, after um, the Cardinal was killed by the witch. Mm-hmm. Um, and Father McPhail... Great scene, loved it. 
Yeah, and he, he agrees to bond the witches so he can become cardinal and mm-hmm. it works. And now she's like, now that you've done this, I'm blackmailing you. You're, you're going to do what the fuck I want. Yeah. And I was like, right on, girl. But I like seeing that because it adds a lot to the story, mm-hmm. knowing... Because in the books, the magisterium is the bad guy. Like, we're fighting against the magisterium, but yeah. it's not as clearly viewed as to why they're so bad. You just understand they're bad. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the show, they're explaining to you why they're bad, what they're doing. They're attacking innocent witches. They're Mm -hmm. doing all these things for power to try and control humanity. Mm -hmm. Because that's a big thing about this series is fighting against the church and their control over society. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's pretty much what happens in the first two episodes. I feel like we're talking through it. So I'm just going to go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. That's cool because also you have to think like of the 26 minutes we've recorded, about 15 of that have not been on the episodes. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going in a good place. Mm -hmm. Um, so the next uh, episode, it sees Lee Scoresby being beckoned by a mysterious figure to return to him. Um, then a man working for Boreal is chasing Lyra, and she gets into the car with him. Mm-hmm. And that's where he steals the alethiometer, which mm-hmm. makes him even worse. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Lee's bal- and then it cuts back to Lee Scoresby, and his balloon flies him to a town that he wasn't intending to go to mm-hmm. um, because he's being summoned by Stanislaw Screwman. Can I say that? Mario has been telling me that he did not like Lin-Manuel Miranda in this role. And I've been like, okay, I really, I like him, so I don't have a problem with him in this role. But there is, like, a gun scene where the things that he said, I was like, oh, if you were, like, a country, western, western kind of guy, you would have delivered this differently, and it would be more powerful like i think it is important to have him as a country western guy because it's just like a no nonsense he was sam elliott in the first movie sam elliott was Who's perfect sam elliott? he's that old man with the mustache and super from text like he was perfectly cast as yeah. sam elliott lin, lin manuel oh yeah 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 uh-huh um, lin manuel miranda like is fine is a fine choice um man. but like he doesn't if you don't want a country western man in that role, then the dialogue needed to change. Yeah. Because the dialogue is very... Now that I know that, when I when I listen to him speak, I'm like, I'm imagining what like a country Texas drawl or a Savannah drawl would sound like. And I was like, oh, it makes more sense. There's a disconnect. Yeah. Because he's not a southerner. He's not that person. And he's not... Yeah, he's not like this, like, like no nonsense. If he were to play somebody, I would rather him play John Perry. Because at least he's of color, and so it would have made sense with his father. Um, I mean, although he's Will is half black, half white, so I mean, they could have still. I don't it know off. that he. I don't know. I mm, I don't know that he could have played John Perry. Well, John Perry has much less screen time, so it would have been less less intolerable. No, no, no. But I'm just also thinking about John Perry's role and the way that Andrew Scott did it. He did a great job. He did a good job. I just have a hard time not seeing him as Moriarty. So, you mentioned the shooting. That happens. He kills somebody. He gets arrested. Yeah. And then Mrs. Coulter arrives, interacts with him. He refuses to tell her where Lyra is. This never happened in the book, by the way. Um, it did not happen? It did not happen in the book. Like, it didn't happen. They didn't talk about it. And you find out later it happened? No, nope, It never happened in the book. So, her meeting up with Lin-Manuel Miranda and, like, Scorsby. letting him go. Yeah. <laughs> Scoresby. Lee Scoresby. So Mrs. Coulter is seeing Lee Scoresby and letting him go didn't happen in the book. Did not happen in the book at all. So that's they just why did you that like her to more. humanize her more to show that her actions I are to protect don't Lyra. Like her. I don't like her, and you it's my own issues. No, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But no, but the, her actions are to protect Lyra, and that was a very good way of showing it. I think she's manipulative. And then oh, she's getting, manipulative. Getting on Absolutely. your knees and crying like, "Why don't you love me, bitch? You know why I don't love you. Mm-hmm. You have to be a mom. You don't get to just get the role." Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Mrs. Coulter is, like, I hate her. When She's I a see flawed her individual. on the screen, I don't... Okay, there's flawed, and then there's just outright evil. She's, She's not evil. evil. She's not evil. You don't get... No, no, no. You don't get to do the things that you've done out of love for your child and then think it's okay. Like, the things that she has done have but been does absolutely she think they're okay? terrible. Does she think they're okay? I feel she like, remorse? yeah. She justifies... I feel like this is how she has to move through that world, and maybe the world is you know flawed too and it brings out the worst in her but like still the things that she's done is not okay like would i don't you move, care would you not move heaven and earth to i don't know that i would child? kill and torture people for my child for your child i would don't know that i would do that i have my own morals and mm-hmm. i love my children but they are people. but also in this world like if torture someone, is acceptable okay fine but like i've thought about this if someone killed my child like i don't even know that the death penalty is something that i would support and if they got the death penalty i'm certainly not going to be the person watching Mm -hmm. i don't agree with that like no there to me there are hard lines like move through the world the way you need to you are a female in a man's world but no there are things that she's done that for me are unforgivable Mm -hmm. 
work. So there's a difference in being flawed. Like, I'm flawed. You're flawed. But I'm also not out there killing witches for the sake of my daughter. No, those are the parents. That's John Benet's parents. Those people are fucking terrible. They're the worst. So, yeah. no, you don't get to do stuff like that in the name of your children. All of a sudden, that makes it okay. No, it's still wrong. Okay. I don't. I'm so mad. I don't like her. I don't know. I like her like a lot. Her. I feel like I'm going to start crying. I'm so angry. I like her What a is lot. wrong with me? Nothing. I feel like I'm going to... I just think you have issues with your mom. No. And so your mom... No, no. I'm talking about myself from my perspective. This has nothing oh. to do with my mom. I would not do the things that she has done. Right, right. In the name of my children. And you're a different person than her. She's terrible. She's terrible. Okay. There. I just think her manipulation is coloring. Like your dissatisfaction with her being a manipulative person uh-huh. is coloring everything else you see with her. Uh huh. And I think that is a you thing. Well, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you don't That's like manipulative fair. mothers. I don't like manipulative people. people. De- like definitely. it's not a mom thing. It's like you cannot. You cannot position yourself in a way to try and control me. But like, that's I will an issue say, from, she mm. killed and tortured. Right? A witch. No, I'm not even talking about her though. Lyra th- is just as manipulative as her. But you love Lyra. Lyra has not tortured anybody. She hasn't tortured anybody, but she is just as manipulative to get her own way. But she's manipulative. It, it's different. It is very, very. I feel different. like Lyra will eventually be like her mother. I hate this show. <laughs> I hate, I hate it. I haven't read, I haven't I read. I can't even say that I disagree with you because do I see, the thing is, is I see parts of Lyra that are like Mrs. Coulter and I definitely see parts of Lyra that are, are like Lord Azriel and they're not my favorite characters, right? Uh-huh. But it's kind of like she still has a moral compass. I still feel like she knows that she's lying, but she lied so that she could position a way to get you know, the polar bear. No. Yeah. No. So that is a big disconnect with the show in the book. Lyra is just a liar. In the book, she's a very deceitful lying child. I and can... it is not for, oh, it's for the greater good thing. No, it is not like that at all. She's just telling you a lie for the sake of telling you a lie to make you think she's cooler. That is not Lyra at all. So that's a big difference between the show and the book. Lyra is a lot less likable in that regard. So maybe in the book, I'll feel differently about Mrs. Coulter. Maybe so. But like Lyra is very, like she will lie and tell you, oh, my father fought all these men and did all these things. Um, Like it's a big thing, especially in the first book. I hate this show so much. (laughs) I hate it. Like I hate everything about it. (laughs) It's like, I don't know how it's possible to have a show that has such a slow build, especially in season two. And you still feel like exhausted when you're done watching it. Uh Uh-huh. Like, it's, it's a good story. Like, we watching four to seven, like, just, I was like, oh my God, I don't know. Like, I just don't know, man. I don't know how I feel about it. And I feel like I won't know until the end of season three. I just hope the payoff of season three is good enough I, for you. Man, I fucking hope so. Because I don't know where we're going from here. Like, I don't know. Like, I have an idea. It's a war with heaven. Yeah. I mean, I have not Well, yeah, the last scene is, what's his name? Like... Getting Stefania to side with him. What's his name? Lord Asriel. Like, literally, he, he's given a war speech. Like, we're mm-hmm. going to war, homies. Saddle up. I'm so and I didn't, I don't think I realized it. Mm-hmm. I didn't recognize his voice because at that, didn't they just like pan it's, to it's different. It's just the angels at first and then it cuts to him talking. But like it pans to different characters while he's giving his speech right, and right. then it goes to the angels. So then I was like, who is narrating? This is not a narrative show. And then it cuts to the angels and I went, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back to the. I'm so sorry. It's I totally fucking fine. hate this show. I'm so mad at you for getting invested. I'm I mad that it. I'm so invested. I love it. I'm I more invested wait. than Harry Potter. Okay. I'm so whatever. I don't now I don't want to read the books. I don't want to dislike Lyra and I don't want to like Mrs. Coulter. Lyra's not an unlikable person. She's just not lying for the greater good. She's lying for personal gain, always. Listen, I'm and I'm I'm okay. Like it, in a, in a book perspective, even if Mrs. Coulter had to do that, like I I could respect that. Like I understand you living in a man's world, but also some of the things that she's done are just like completely viral and unnecessary. Viral, viral. Vile. Yeah, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> well, but I'll like, s- but like, so the torturing the angel. Like I understand why she Witch. did it. The- which I understand why she did it. I, that whole setup of her like trying to manipulate the magisterium and that particular cardinal. Like I, I got it. I understood it. But like also the torture. It was like, come on, there's like make a deal. Like, it's hey, war, girl. I understand. I, and I have a and problem also, with war. I have it's a problem the magisterium. with war. I understand. I still have an issue with it. Absolutely. She I'm not. I'm not justifying gone, it. She could have gone to the witch and be like, hey, I'm going to pretend to torture you. I just need this information. You know, like That's I just not her. I fine. I don't like it though that's what i'm telling you i don't like I, it. I, 
that's fine. And also, great. I'm glad that Lord Boreal died. Fantastic. But let me tell you something. She didn't have to team up with him to do that. Like, you... She had no reason to kill him. She had no reason to kill him. No, but she did have reason to team up with him. Team she up with him. She would not have gotten to that place without No him. reason to kill him. She just killed him to be like... Yeah, no, she killed him because, one, um, he's trying to get her to settle. And she doesn't want that. She... Let's walk away. You wouldn't be the first woman who's walked away from a man because he tried to make you settle. No, but you I... Did he kill him? Yes. Why because, did he have to die? Let me talk, girl. I'm so because, mad. Because... So because sorry. he would have gone back to the magisterium and told them what she was doing How and she where she's that? going. How does she because he's not... He's a snake. He's a snake in the grass. And he knows if she jilts him, if she tells him, no, I don't want to fuck you... Then he's going to be like, fine, fuck you too. I'm going to go tell the magisterium what's going on and they're going to stop you. And then this your daughter's going to die. why I have to binge these things. Because I don't think I got that from the show. He, I don't think that I got that. I think fine. he was like, lo- I, whatever. It's fine. Do your shit. I'm done talking to you. I'm so <laughs> She's just mad, I'm y'all. so mad. Like, this season pissed me off. So the episode opens up. It was up. great, but I'm mad. It was good. I want everyone to watch it, but like, I'm fucking pissed. Like, it's bullshit. This season sucked ass. It's a great season. It's a great se- It's so good. It's annoying. It's just because I know what's going to happen. But I'm not as, as frustrated with it's it. It's not just that, though. Like, it's it's the whole the whole concept is something that you know I am very passionate about, period. Like, we're talking about religion and science to, like, an even more extreme in a different world. But it's still there. It still exists. And it's fighting against them. I just, like, the shit pisses me off so much. I just, and a lot of people... With with the exception, I think Lee Scoresby is the only one who I'd say is like a pure character. He's the only one that's not flawed, just like the character, not Lin Manuel. Like he doesn't seem to be like this. He's just present and in it, which is why they probably should have picked a southerner to do it. Everybody else is so fucking flawed that you like them and hate them at the beginning and end of every you scene. You hate Will. I struggle with Will. How? At uh, Will, um. Not that I dislike him. I just, I kind of want him to lean into trusting people more. Like, I Well, he feel, has a lot of reason not I, to. Yes, I know. I know, I know, I know. But and also, that is actually something they don't really explain well in the show. I feel like I got that. In the book, though, like, they really explain how he cannot trust anybody or explain what his situation with the I family. got it. I don't, th- I think they did a great job. It's, it's a lot more detrimental, though. You're... Like, sure, but I still understand that he he can't trust not even Lyra. Like he, I know he feels like he can trust her, but like mm-hmm. he still struggles with trusting her. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I get it. I understand. Well, when you've been raised your whole life, I want to be compassionate, but we got shit to do. You need to find your dad. You got the knife. There's a war happening. I cannot keep telling you to like love me and trust me. We got to. But this is also my thing about war and movies. Remember, I don't like it. But they're not at war yet. But they they have things that they have to do to get there. They have right. like there's priorities. Right. But yeah. like part of that journey is learning to trust. So, oh, I just I have, but I don't like it in any movie. I right. don't like it when we're in the middle of a war, which is why I love war movies because it's just the action and we're all get there. Let's go, homie. But like when we stop to make out, when there's seven seas fighting, that didn't it, happen in this but, show. But it's still the same thing, though. To me, it's the same thing. It's like I need us to be on the there's, same page there, with our priorities. I don't agree with you because when somebody does a kiss thing or whatever, that has nothing to do with the plot. Mm-hmm. That has nothing to do with character development. That's a, not, this is a this is a Hollywood moment. Just, this he has character development where he has to learn to trust I people because his whole that. life. He it has been him and his mom. Nobody else he can trust on. Nobody else he can lean on. Listen, because he's afraid of getting taken away by the authorities. But I feel like Lyra has proved herself. I feel like she has. That's fine, but like even proved herself to you, but not to him. I feel like he's proved herself to her. No, she's proved himself. She's proved herself to him. I feel that way. In your and eyes. I thought, and yeah, for to me. And then I thought we were in a good place. Like I thought we, you know, she was honest about the alethiometer and like what it told her. They had that whole heart to heart when he was in the bathtub. And then like the witch scene happened, and he, you know, Lyra went to get the knife to show them because she's like, we need to figure out what's going on with your hand. And he still was like, you don't know these people. I was like, but they're from her world. I need you to. But she does know those people. I don't know these people is what he said or whatever. Uh, and he, he was like, she said, if you trust me, then you trust them. And he was like, you don't know that. And I, like, I struggled with that moment because I was like, hey man, half your fingers are gone. Hey man, you don't know what this world is like. Hey man, this girl has stuck by your side. Like, let's not take that five seconds. What are you going to do? Argue about trusting the witches in front of the witches? No. Yes. Yes. Because 
Lyra has shown that she's not reliable. Not she got the yes, yeah, she has. She got she left. She left when he when he was asleep and got the lithiometer stolen. That whole thing happened. So he has reason to not trust her or to not trust in her judgment because clearly she has issues with judgment because it got them in a huge fucking mess. And they almost lost the knife, or they they almost lost the fucking lithiometer because of it. He has reason to not trust her judgment. I don't know. I think you're putting yourself into this too much. Mm -hmm. Because I personally have trust issues, so I totally understand. No, I have trust issues too, but not with the people that, like, I'm connected to. Yes, but if this person just fucked up literally last episode to the point where we had a but huge altercation bond- because of but it. they have been bonded since before that. Like, to right. trust someone. To trust her. To trust but someone. But not to trust these people. Tr- to trust. I don't know these fuckers. To trust. <laughs> to trust someone, though. Like, that still means they're going to fuck up and things are going to happen. It doesn't mean that you lose trust completely. Absolutely, but you can lose trust in their judgment, but not in them as a person. And know. because he sees sh- Lyra sh- is very naive. Listen, you asked me why I struggle with Will. I right. told you why I right, struggle right. with and Will. I, and I'm, I'm arguing you back. Like, You're not changing my mind at all. That's fine. That's <laughs> all. I still, I struggle with Will. And I want to see, I don't think, to me, there's not been enough character development for him. I mean, other than, like, him trusting Lyra, but then, like, kind of still not trusting Lyra. Like, I need to see Will really kind of step up. Okay. Me well, personally. He, Lyra's not going to be in a lot of season three, so. No, why? Because Don't she's know. drugged in the, tr- she's in a trunk. That shit pissed me So, like, the first it. third of it, so she's not going to be that, there. Thank you for bringing that shit up. I do stuff in the name for my children, so I get to drug them and throw them in a trunk? Yes, because. No, no. It, it makes sense because if the moment passes and she cannot be there to partake in it, the prophecy will not come true. So she's just keeping her drugged in a trunk until that moment passes and the war is lost the by thing, Asriel. The whole then thing. she can let her go and do her own thing. Let me tell you something. The whole thing that I struggle about the most with Mrs. Coulter is her. And this is probably because I hate this about myself, is her need for control. Yeah. Like, if there's a prophecy and your daughter's part of the prophecy, as hard as it would be to maybe let those things go, the fact that you think drugging her and throwing her in the trunk is going to stop it from happening, like, it doesn't work like that. It's still a fucking prophecy. It doesn't make any sense to me. But she prophecies don't she, come true always. Okay, fine. But the fact that she's intervening to that extent... Without having ever been present for the first, like, 12 years of her life, Mm -hmm. it drives me... Everything about Mrs. Coulter is a fucking contradiction. It drives me nuts. Oh, that's what it is. I cannot figure the character out. When I think she's going to zig, she zags. And Mm -hmm. when I think she's zagging, she's zig... Like, I just... Oh, I don't like her. She's just not... Oh, I would... Can we get back to the thing? I would punch her in the face. I really would. Can we get back to the thing? Yeah, get back to it. I'm done talking. (laughs) I'm so sorry. This is God Mario, damn. Because Mario was like, you haven't finished yet. I was like, absolutely, I have finished. But let me tell you something. I'm not talking about it with you until it's on the fucking <laughs> podcast. <laughs> because I'm so angry. <laughs> I hate this show so much. Okay, so episode four. <laughs> um, it opens with an explanation of the knife, where specters come from, where we the knife came about from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Let me fucking I'm talk. So God done. damn. I'm so over it. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> Lee and John Perry finally meet. Um, and he explains he summoned him. Um, and John explains he needs to bring Ashtar, which is the God Slayer, which is the subtle knife, to... And they call it something else. Ashtar. Not in the show. The, the, that's that weird A word, right? Because I have the cup. A-E. They call it the, es- the Edister or something like that. That's the word. I'm just pronouncing okay. it weird. Okay, okay, okay. S- Esther. That's the that word. I just feel like I have to make sure I know what you're talking about because I'm not good with names right. and stuff. So they he needs to bring subtle knife to Az- the subtle knife to Azrael in order for Azrael to win this war. Correct. And so he explains that to him and he's like, well, if you can guarantee that Lyra will be under protection of this knife then I will do it for you. And he lies to him and says, yes, I will make sure of that. So he was lying. Yes, because okay. he has no intention of it at all or gives a fuck about Lyra because he doesn't know how important she is. Yeah. Okay, um, I thought so. I was, and that was, that's a very Moriarty thing. And that's a very book thing. Yeah. Okay, because I was like, I don't know that I trust this character, but then like he kept promising and I was like, Because he doesn't just know. Me. He didn't even know he was going to his son. He just knew he was going to the knife bearer. He knew that he was being some, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, keep going. So Boreal... Meets Mary, tries to buy her stuff. She's like, no, this isn't going to be used for weapons or anything. It's mm-hmm. not happening. Mm-hmm. Um, Great scene, by the way. They she get to, to her guns. Yep. They get to the Toy de Angeli, which is the big tower in the center of Chitagatse where, um, where the knife bearer is. Mm-hmm. He fights Tulio, wins. He gets the knife. Gets his fingers cut off, which is the sign of the, the bearer. Mm-hmm. 
and then he gets a knife, Tulio leaves, and then he learns how to use the knife. The old knife bearer teaches him what it's for, how to use it, mm -hmm. how to connect with it. And how, how to make it work, um, and the dangers of it, and understanding the specters and what have you. Um, and then um, it cuts to the witches attacking the Magisterium ship. Um, then they go to look for Lyra. Lord Boreal takes Mrs. Coulter to Chita Gatsi for the first time, and you seem scared like a little bitch. Yeah, um, he looked fucking stressed. He looked like he was in a war zone. He was so scared and stressed. And then the episode ends with Mary talking to the angels, which we already talked about. Which was amazing. Um, so episode five um, is Magisteria drama, Magisterium drama. I didn't really summarize it. Those are like the worst ones to me. Like I have no interest in what they're doing. It's good for explaining at least the bad guys and sure. understanding them. In the books, you, it's not there. When I get more than one scene of the Magisterium in an episode, I kind of like don't even pay attention. <laughs> I really don't because I'm like, it's just a bunch of like white men in rows running around yeah. thinking they're powerful. I don't want to see that shit. It's happening in my real life. Like yeah. I don't care. And it's about dismantling that. Yeah. That's what the series I want to see them dismantling. I don't really... I'm not interested in seeing how they freak out about it. Like, fuck you. Die. It's All okay. right. So Mrs. Coulter visits Mary in her office, and they kind of talk about Lyra. My heart was pounding. It was so intense. And then she just disappears. Because Mrs. Coulter, you never know what she's going to do. Yeah. She could stab you, or she could be nice to you. And I, my heart was <sighs> The pounding. actress who plays her is so good. She's she incredible. She shows so many emotions on her face. You Without can see... changing her face. Yes, and you can see just the torment in her and, like, the fact that Mary kind of has this connection with Lyra, yeah. she's really jealous of. Heart was pounding. Yeah. Like, when they were in the a facility, mm -hmm. heart was pounding. I was like, oh, what's going to happen? I was real nervous for that. And then um, it cuts to Mary talking to the cave again and telling her just the details of shit. You have to play the serpent and tempt the child and to save the girl and the boy and do what have you. Mm -hmm. You need to go to this place, do this. Like it pretty much tells her what the fuck she has to do. What her role is in all of this. And where she needs to go to get started. And so, um, the kids confront the kids of Chitagatse confront the kid, confront Lyra and, and will, because they found Tulio's body. And that's where the, the witches show up. No, not yet. That's, no, that's not yet. I'm positive. That's I not yet. I thought that's what... It's, it's not? Okay. <laughs> I just summarized it. It's not when that happens. I just watched it. Right. That happens later because they first confront them and say, we're going to fucking I'm kill you. I'm thinking of like when she showed up to kill... Okay, sorry. They I'm said, we're going to fucking kill you. And they're yeah. like... And then they run away. Yeah. Because All they right. still have the knife. Yeah. Um, I was thinking when they actually showed up at the house. You're right. So, um, Will and Lyra then go to Lord Boreal's house and fight Mrs. Coulter and Lord Boreal for... The alethiometer. I hated that too. And Pan beats the shit out of that golden monkey. Mm -hmm. I screamed. I was so excited. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite part of the episode. Um, and that's actually what I have written. Pan favorite beats the shit. I believe you. Um, now episode six, um, it shows Rudis Gardy leaving um, Seraphina Pecola to follow the angels. Um, because she wants to find Azrael and she knows all the angels Seraphine are going to Azrael. Seraphina Pecola is also a favorite character. I love her. I like her better in the books than in the show just because she doesn't isn't given as much screen time. Like, you don't really see Lyra interact with her as much. I like what I've seen. Oh, no, definitely. She's yeah. cool. She's cool. But she's so much better in the book. I have nothing to compare it to, so I love what they've done with her. Um, so, the Magisterium... I get mad lesbian vibes from her. That's oh, it's totally... Like it's the her. haircut. Yeah. It's the Is haircut. It? Yeah. Yeah, totally. I like her. She kind of reminds me... I like all lesbians. <laughs> she kind of reminds me... I feel safe with them. She kind of reminds me of... Yes! Oh my god! You know, I thought she was a lesbian until she's had a boyfriend, and I was yeah. like, aww. No, but I, like, <laughs> like, she reminds me a lot of her. Time. She does. No, 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 that's fair. I'm with you. I see it. <laughs> so, um, the Magisterium finds out through their alethiometer reader, Fab Powerful, yeah. that what, what, uh, Mrs. Coulter's trying to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and then this is when the kids attack Will and Lyra, mm -hmm. and the witches come down and save them. Mm hmm. Um, and then Mary arrives to Chitagatse at the same time, and the specters aren't affecting her, and they don't know why, but it's the angels that are protecting her. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, the kids, that's why the kids, when they see her, they're like, what the fuck? How are you, well, how are you here? What's yeah. going on? Um, <sighs> Mrs. Coulter not, con I mean, being able to control the specters are, like, was one of the most frustrating things I'd ever seen. I was yeah. ready for her to meet her demise. I was like, yes, you're done. Yeah. No, it, but it kind of goes... I understand that there's a point. I just, it's one more thing that she has power of that, like, I struggle with. I don't want her to have any power. All her right. power has been through manipulation. I wasn't even going to talk about that girl. What? The specter? The specter? <laughs> no, it just goes to show, like, she has a weird power about her that they never explain in the books. 
um, how she like she can go far away from her demon. That's my that's the thing that it's, I wanted to ask. She's you about. using the same thing. Um, she's suppressing her humanity, and part of your humanity is being a whole person. Okay. And so she's kind of cutting herself off from her soul. And that's how she's able to control them. Yeah, because it was very weird. Can I just jump to the scene in um, episode seven? Yeah. When she, um, which witch showed up in seven to talk to Mrs. Col- like found Mrs. Coulter. It's just one that she captures. The one that she kills to find out about. It's not an important one, right? Like, no, should it's know not. The name. So when she was talking to her and like, you know, keeping control of that conversation and then she called her golden monkey to kill the demon. After all that happened, you know, the demon in that point wasn't scared of the specter. It's like he was just killing. It was, a, it was some sort of bird. Uh-huh. And the specters took over the, the bird demon. Um, he wasn't scared. And then after it was over, like, he got scared of the specters. And I thought, how is that possible if they're one in the same? Like, I had this whole thought, like, 30 minutes of just thinking to myself, how is it possible that Mrs. Coulter's demon can be scared of the specters one second and then not scared the next second when he shouldn't be scared at all because she can control them and they're one in the same? So does that mean that she separated herself from her humanity in order to kill the witch? No. So this is a physical representation of an internal conflict because you can do something and not agree with yourself and then have an argument with yourself or not like be conflicted internally about what you just did or what you can do. Maybe I'm too much like Mrs. Coulter and that's why I don't like her. Maybe. Maybe that's it. But then also something that I don't think you're getting is that yes, they are one being Mm -hmm. in a sense, but they're separate. Yeah. No, I I understand that, but it, you know, it seems like, from what I've seen in the show, like, when there's a decision to be made or, like, with the exception of children, the adults that have demons, the demon and the person seem to be on the same page. If we're killing someone, we're mm-hmm. killing someone. If we're scared, then we're both scared. If we're happy, then we're both happy. But this was a situation where she clearly didn't look scared of the specters, but her demon sure was, and then she berated him for being scared. I you think know? this is... And then she's like, you're either with me or you're not. And I'm like, how can he not be with you? He's your demon. So it just seems like, yeah, she said that scene. Yeah. No, yeah. Oh, you looked, you looked at me like I didn't, like I got that wrong. No, no, you're totally right. I just, it's hard for me. Like, yes, I have conflict within myself, but it seems to be like the stuff that you're sure about, like you and your demon are sure about. Well, so maybe, she's making a lot of really awful decisions. Shitty. Um, and doing some terrible things. And she's conflicted about it. Because she's a shitty person. Because she's doing it because she thinks it's the only way that she can achieve what she needs to do to save her daughter. Sure. And Trump thought the only way to get out of going to prison was to become president and do an awful job of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I think you're too personally involved in Maybe. her character. Maybe. That's very fair. I am very invested you're in this You're too show. personally yeah. involved in her as a character. Well, and I blame you because you're like, you're going to love her and you're going to hate her. And so I keep waiting... I keep waiting for the love moments, right? Mm-hmm. Because I, I recognize that I can love and hate characters at the same time. So I'm like, oh, Mario, you know, Mario and I tend to, like, we do agree with a lot of things. And so I was like, okay, I'm waiting for, like, my love moments. And then, like, they don't happen. And every scene she's in, I just fucking hate her more. And so I'm so mad because I'm like, I'm supposed to like her. I feel like you kind of just hit the nail on the head, though, that you're very similar to her. Mm-hmm. And so... I mean, I'm not killing people. No, but, like... And I wouldn't do anything for my children. There's a line. But, like, you will play the game if you have to play the game. Absolutely. And I do that in my everyday life. Um, For sure. So, like, she's just... I think also it's not my world. Yeah. And I don't know why I feel like this world is my world. Probably because what they're touching on is such a, like, passionate subject for me. Well, our... Will's world is our world. Yes, it is. But a majority of this is like, it's not real. Like, mm-hmm. It's yeah. not real. But the things that there, I looked at the computer, like people were looking at it. Like, what's up? But it's such a passionate subject that it feels very real to me because it's something that I argue all the time. Science and religion, science and religion. Mm-hmm. And so like, I feel so fucking invested. It's just people are not going to rise up and do things to do the right thing in this world. And I struggle with that. because They're going I, to. Yeah, probably. But for two no. seasons, they have not. And yes. just, I fucking hate it. I just hate it with all of my heart. Uh, my and it just makes me wonder how you're going to react to like how things I, end. Yo, I'm, I'm fucking nervous too, man. I feel like well, no, 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 this might like, be my game of it's thrones. A big, it's a big, like, they do the right thing finally. Oh, well, then I'll be happy. Then I'll be happy. 
they do the right thing. Maybe it'll change your opinion about her. Which is why I told you, like, I I genuinely believe season one, episode three drops. I'm going back to season one, episode one, and I'm watching until all of season three is posted. Then I believe I'm just going to start right back over. I think I'm going to end up watching it twice. Okay. I think there's things that I'm missing. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Um, But also, you like, something to consider is I've read the book, so I understand things better. Yeah. And it may not be communicated well, but to me, as a reader of the books, I recognize what they're doing. And so I'm just saying, you're saying, like, I love Mrs. Coulter watching the same things I'm watching. And I'm just like, no, Mrs. Coulter sucks monkey balls. Like, Mm -hmm. she's the worst person I've ever met in my life. And and the, and to be fair, like I probably should hate Lord Azrael because I'm sure he's doing the same things. He's but then, doing worse things. But then they but they also kind of pitted them against each other. Yep. Like when you when they talk about like why he took Lyra away so that Mrs. Coulter couldn't be involved. So then you expect them to kind of be enemies. But then at the end of season one, they're like walking through the world together. I think the reason you don't dislike Lord Azrael as much as I you haven't do, seen you him. haven't seen him. Yeah, I haven't seen what he's been doing behind the scenes. He's not there. Like so. I, if it were flipped and I saw all of what Lord Azrael has been doing this whole time and Mrs. Coulter was not showing up as much, like I probably would hate Lord Azrael mm-hmm. just as much. I don't know. I don't Why? know if that's Because it's James McAvoy? Yeah. Oh, no, and I don't, fair. I think you have, I think you're seeing yourself in her or her actions in you. And I really think that's coloring your vision of her. I fucking hate her, man. Um, anyway, anyway. She's that's the worst. She's probably one of the worst characters in a fictional world I've ever experienced. I like I hate her in every scene. Okay. I understand that you don't, and I understand your reasons for liking yeah. her. I just no. No, it's fine. You don't have to like her. That's okay. I just want to because you told me that you love hate her so well, much. Mario has such a strong opinion about Mrs. Coulter. Yeah, I mean, but I know her whole story. Yeah. And you don't, and maybe that'll change it. Maybe it won't. Maybe we're just gonna have a difference of opinion, and that's okay. Maybe I need to back up and look at this whole thing like it's like leading up to war. Like maybe I need these are like people are acting out leading up to like a because really it is big, leading up to a yeah. huge war. And so maybe the, I feel like this is day to day interaction, like she's killing off witches and shit. You know, all what this I'm fair saying? and love and war. You know, I don't agree with that sentiment, but sure. Okay. But I mean, that's the concept. Fine, I just don't agree with it. <laughs> I think that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I hate Mrs. Coulter. So, um, so Mrs. it shows Mrs. Coulter taking control of the specters. And then she poisons Boreal. Which I liked because I hated him so much, but I still think... We just Maybe, had a yeah, convers- he did have to die. Yeah, he did have to die. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so no, I changed your mind? Right. <laughs> that part you changed my mind. I still think she's a fucking idiot. I hate her. Um, and then it cuts to... Um, it, the episode ends with uh, Lee and John fighting three Magisterium airships, just defeating two, but then getting shot down by the third one. And then it ends. And then the next episode opens, um, and Rudis Gardi is listening to the cliff casts. Talking oh, about they fuck me up. Those those creatures, yeah, they're creepy. They yeah, real creepy. Um, they I think are gonna be in it again later. They remind me. Did you ever see that movie where it was like the mole creatures in the cave? Mm-hmm. It was a horror movie. I can't remember the, the name Descent. of it. Yeah, they remind me of those creatures, and so I saw it. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like that. No. I mean, they're not like huge characters. They just might be in it. No, later they're on. just fucking creepy. Is they're all super I'm saying. Creepy. Absolutely. And, but she overhears them talking about the great war that's about to happen and that Asriel needs that knife in order to win. Mm-hmm. And so she goes and she shares that with uh, Serafina. Serafina? Am I making up news? Eh? Ruta. It's Ruta Scardi who saw this, not yeah, Serafina. But who did she share it with? Oh, she went to go see Serafina. Okay, so I was right. Serafina um, Pecola. And then it, it cuts to the scene of, of her t- um, with the other... Mm-hmm. With the other witch, finding out that Lyra is Eve, mm-hmm. and then killing her. And then having the conflict with her demon, mm-hmm. which we discussed already. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so sorry. I just had so many questions about that scene specifically, mm-hmm. and I've been holding on to them because I didn't want to forget it. Mm-hmm. You're kind of like my encyclopedia of his dark materials. No, it's fine. And I, I just really think that's a very good way to portray her being conflicted about her own actions. And if she thinks what she's doing is justifying what she, uh, justifying the ends of to her means, you know, like if she feels she should be continued on this path or if she should stop. And so that, that 
display of them arguing with each other. I just had a whole... Is a really epiphany. good way to show that. I just had a whole epiphany. Lord Azra, at least from what I've seen, what I have seen, is doing things in terms of, like, we need to fight against the Magisterium. All, like, every decision I make is for that, right? Because even when Liver went up on the mountain, he got super pissed. It's for the greater good. It's for the greater good. And he got super pissed, like, fuck, that's my daughter. I don't want to do He was going to kill her anyway. But he was going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Coulter, it feels very much like... Her only consideration is Lyra, and I I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I have an issue with that. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I just, in my head, I figured it out. It's the ninth issue she has with her, this last last 30 minutes. I'm so done. <laughs> She's so mad at her. Yeah, I am. I have a lot of problems with this, but only because I was set up to believe she would be amazing. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's fine. I think she's an amazing character. I love her. She's so she's complex. She's clearly an amazing character because I can't stop fucking talking about her. I just don't like her. Yeah. No, fine. she's like, you love to hate her. And yeah. then like, at the end, you're like, okay, I respect it. I respect the game. We'll find out. I, I, I respect the game. No, no, it's fine. We'll find out. Uh, <laughs> Stay tuned. So Lee stays behind to buy John time and tells him to go. And I have, he dies with the party emoji. Um... <laughs> Although I was really that sad. Was very sad. I was sad when me. Hester died. Because yeah. I love Hester. I hate Lee's character in the show. But I love the actress who plays Hester. I, as the character that I, you know, I can see what he's supposed to be. Like, it still made me sad to see him die. I really wanted him mm -hmm. to reconnect with Lyra. I struggled he does. with that scene. Appear excuse me, apparently. But at this point, I don't believe that. Like, I don't know that. When he died, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the episode, it kind of hinted it. At the end of the episode. But in yeah. that moment, I didn't yeah. know. I was really sad. So, John and Will are reunited. And this is a huge change from the book. And I love this change. Mm -hmm. um, so, John and Will are reunited. And um, he explains to him what he has to do. Mm -hmm. And then the one survivor from that last airship comes... And is about to shoot Will, and he turns him around and sacrifices himself to save Will. Did that not happen in the book? No, in the book, he. Well, you know, we'll cover that in a minute because I have like a no. List I of have things. to know now. I have to know now. What happened in the book? <laughs> so Just in the book, in the book, he in the past is a, one of the witches with Seraphina and them is named like Yutika Minen, and she was spurned by him. Mm -hmm. She wanted to fuck him. And he's like, no, I have a wife. Mm -hmm. And I'm lo I'm faithful to my wife. I don't want her. And she got pissed off about that. And so she said, the next time I see you, I'm going to kill you. Mm. And so they reunited. They don't even get a talk in the fucking book, really. Mm. And then she just appears and kills him right in front of Will. So he dies And then Will no kills her. What. So he dies. He dies no matter, matter what. what. But yeah, this don't... death makes sense. Yeah. This death, he sacrificed himself for his son. All his job, all the purpose of him in this show mm -hmm. is to tell him, you need to take this life to Lord Asriel. That's Asriel's. all he existed for. That's all he existed show. for. And he completed that mission. He completed that and died. So I he served I his purpose. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. Like that, this is probably, is this six? This is the last episode. This is the last Seven. episode. Yeah. So I struggled so much with this episode. I hated that Lee died. I wanted him to be reunited with Lyra in this life, in this time form. Mm -hmm. I hated that, um... What's his name died? John Perry. John, John Perry died. That, like, what a terror. And I hated it for Will. I hated mm -hmm. it for Will because all he's ever talked about is just, like, wishing his dad was still around and being able to be a fucking kid. Like, that's clearly all that Will wants. And now he goes into this other world and he has this responsibility to the library and now to the knife. And, and there's now a to war. the multiverse. Like, that's, and I hated it for him. I can't, mm -hmm. like, it breaks my heart. I want to cry. I want to lay on the floor in a fetal position and cry. Yeah. That's what I want to do for Will. It breaks my heart. Um, the one thing, though, that I missed, and I, like, I caught in the review, mm. was, um... He says you need to follow the angels. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned... We'll, we'll get there. We'll get okay. there. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so um, that happens. He dies. Mm -hmm. And then it does the thing you're talking about where it shows the different people in different places. Yeah. Um, and Azriel is talking to Zephania. He's giving a speech. Um, Zephania is the leader of the rebel angels. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the other angels are there as well. And um, he's like, we're going to fight. We're going to do this. Like, we're going to defeat the authority who is God. Mm -hmm. God. Um, in air quotes, sorry. Yeah, oh yeah. Air quotes. Um, this is not really God. It's again what man create God to be. No, no, no. So you're gonna find out what God is um, okay. in the next series. Okay. Um, but he's he's God, but he's not God. It's okay. it's anyway anyway. I can um, accept that. So 
And that's why I have such an issue with people having a hard, like a, an issue with the series. It's like, oh, they kill God. They're killing God. But in God. polytheistic societies, God is God, but also not God. Mm-hmm. So, like... I, I but this is uneven poly... But this is no, no, but I, I, it's easier for me to accept right. that concept because I, I recognize that there are other ways to view it. Mm-hmm. So, you know... But he's an allegory for the Christian God. Like, Great. I'm so excited about season three. Not really. I feel like this has taken years off my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it cuts to Mrs. Coulter kidnapping Lyra and showing her oh, the trunk. Oh, I had such an issue with this. And she closes the trunk and it goes Fucking to dark. Casey Anthony reincarnate. Oh my god, it was terrible. And then the post credit scene... Yes, I'm dying to talk to you about this. I have so many fucking questions. I have answers. Number if you want one, them. how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> that was an office quote. My favorite office quote. <laughs> the best one. Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Number two. So does that mean? Does that mean that like when people are dying, they're not actually dying? No, they're dying. They're dying. So, but he's talking to Lyra. Mm-hmm. How is that possible? Do you want to know the truth? Is it going to spoil anything in season three? I mean, it's a concept that's explored in season three. Oh, God. When does season three come out? I have no clue. Because of the pandemic. Um, They barely... I really think this episode got cut short because of the pandemic. It should have been eight episodes. Because... Wasn't that season one, eight episodes? Yes. Um... (sighs) I don't think season three will come out until next year at the earliest. No, I'm just looking. Because I don't even think they filmed it yet. I, I think... <sighs> it will return for a third season. That posted December 22nd. Uh, 2021. Oh, it's coming out in 2021? Wait, the BBC has said that production is set to begin in Cardiff in 2021. Oh, so they haven't even started shooting yet. So they have, well, they could have started shooting. It is 2021, so they could have started shooting. Let me, let me, I think I'm, I'm having such an internal struggle that, listen, I, like me as a person, stuff like this, I get so into, like I get so, it's unhealthy is what it is. It's it's terrible because it's everything that I love in a story, right? Mm-hmm. It's another world. We've got science, we've got religion, we've got witches, we've got angels. Like it's it's fucking amazing, right? But it's not like Lovecraft Country where I was taken along for a journey. I feel like I'm living inside of this. I cannot even explain to you the difference. So I think that in order for I think I have to finish the books and I think I need to do it really soon. Okay. Yeah, because I need to know what happens in three, I think, before I watch it. Because I might have an aneurysm. Like, it may break me as a person. <laughs> Season one was so great. Do you remember? Like, I was messaging you the whole time I was watching it. Like, you got to play with this. Like, oh, my God, that's so cool. Oh, my God, that's so amazing. Wait, what does this mean? Does that mean Mrs. Coulter's? Like, all this stuff. But, like, season two? Fuck you, Mario. <laughs> like, it was terrible. It's so good. Oh, it's, it's so I'm, good. I'm so upset. I love it. Like, oh, it's the worst. So, like... It's the worst. It's setting up so much. I know. I hope it pays off for I you. Know. I hope it, pays, it paid off for me. It's why it's book three is why it's my favorite series. It's very much like when the seventh book of Harry Potter got split into two movies, right? Mm-hmm. And I watched the first one, mm-hmm. but because I had read the book, like it wasn't this big terrible thing for me. You know what I'm saying? Also, I think there's a disconnect from watching the movies before reading the books. Because I think that there's things that, like, I'm missing that probably are important. Because if you've... In reading the, the show? Yeah. yeah. Because I think most people would feel like, I feel I haven't not read the books of Mrs. Coulter. Uh-huh. Like, I think most people would be like, what? This bitch is crazy. She's a lunatic. They're portraying her that way, though. Yes, I understand. But what you're telling me is that there are things that the book portrays differently, even with Lyra. So, like, I'm comparing her to Lyra a lot. And it's like, well, you don't have a real understanding of who Lyra is because mm-hmm. you haven't read the book. Yeah. This is just how you're being set this up is, to look at her. Well, this, this is version of Lyra. Culture. Yeah. That's this version of Lyra that you know. Yeah. And, that's the one and even the Will thing. Like, you have a different perspective on Will than I do. So now I feel like I have to read the book. Mm-hmm. And hopefully my opinions still stand. But if they don't, I'll let you know. <laughs> Are you but actually going to read them, though? I think so. I think the problem is, is 
I tried the audio book and I, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. And especially now with the job that I have now, there's no way I can listen to a book or a podcast or anything at work. I, I listened to focus music the last two days Okay, that I was on the floor working because it's so much information. Oh, with your new stuff? That yeah. You're doing? I passed out at seven o'clock last night on the couch. Wow. Not last night on Friday night. Daniel was like, are you okay? And I was like, no, my brain is so full. It's like, it's heavy. Damn. It's a lot of information. I'm so scared of fucking it. Oh. So, the problem is, is I'm on such a political kick right now. Such a political kick. Mm-hmm. And I still need to finish Brock's book, but that's going to be an all-year project for me, because I don't want that to end. Oh, okay. But I still, I need to read Rage. I think what I'm going to do is Rage and then His Dark Materials, no matter what. Okay. No matter what. It's on, it's, it's, it's on the record. I'm going to hold you to it. I need to read them. I'm just going to keep this part of the recording on my phone. And I anytime. thought I could get away with listening to the audiobook, but I, I can't focus in the audiobook. I love the audiobook. But did you do the audiobook first? or the I've book? never read the books. I've only ever listened to the books. Really? Mm-hmm. I, that's usually how I consume books. I don't read. I listen. Maybe I'll try I'm, again. But um, I read Harry Potter, like physical hard copy in my hand. I read Harry Potter. That's the only series that... Well, not only. It's one of the few series that I've actually physically read before I listened to the audiobooks. But now, just because of how I am and how I do things... And how I process things, really, like, even when I watch Audio a TV show, show yeah. I'm an auditory person. Yeah, me too. Like, I, even when I'm watching a TV show, I'm never usually watching it. I'm just listening to it and drawing mm-hmm. or working on something else. There's certain TV shows that I've watched that I know I can't do that with. Mm-hmm. Speaking, Most. Okay. Speaking of. What? No, and then I, I was going to say speaking of and then, like, go into a whole other topic, but I think... I'm going to pull back and say that for Ray of Lights. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, because it's most, um, most, like, things that I watch, I listen to. Like, there's some that I actually pay attention to. Yeah. Um, but I'm just, I like to hear a story. I can only be distracted with another task if it's something I've already seen. Okay. I'm so obsessed with not missing things uh-huh. that I, it's hard for me to, now, I don't know what's changed in the last couple of years, because I used to be the same way, but no, not anymore. Maybe I'll change. I also cannot have more than one person speaking to me at a time. Oh, same though. I don't like that. Well, it's like with my kids, like they do it and Daniel and I'm like, I can't listen to all three of you. Like pick one and don't ask me to look for something for you on Amazon and then ask me for a snack. I, like, I love you and I wish that I could, but I can't. It's, it, and it frustrates me. <laughs> so I'm the worst person to have a kid with autism. Oh my God. That's what it's like. He asks you to look for things on Amazon for him? Absolutely. Like what? Um, he loves Harry the Wimpy Kid right now, and he wants the journal. Like, he wants, not the one that has the writing prompts, but he wants the one that's blank exactly like the kid in the book. Do they have that? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. did you order it? Uh, no, I'm going to order it today, though. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But I, um, I'm just very... You didn't ex- think I was going to have so much to say about his dark material. Oh, you had too much to say. No. I kept trying to talk, and you kept talking over me, and I was like... I've okay. been holding this inside okay. for like two weeks. Mm-hmm. It was a therapy session. It really I, was. I She's mad. Really Is this what Stephanie gets every week? No. No. <laughs> we need to talk about Stephanie too, though. In a bad way? No, just like because I saw her and had like a oh, right, 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 brain right, right, right. tumor. Have you talked to her about this yet? No, on my therapy sessions tomorrow. I'm, I'm excited going, to hear about this. I'm going into the office. I don't oh, know that I want to talk to her about it. Like I'm struggling with whether or not that I should. I feel like I should, but I don't want to. What time is your appointment? Six. Five. Oh, okay. five, five, five. I won't be there because I have a point tomorrow at one. I'm five, for one on Monday. Five. But anyway, she has still not billed me for this entire year, and I'm so nervous because our insurance changed. Like, what if the copay changed? And it then didn't. it didn't. Mm-mm. Okay, good. Because I'm just like, what if she's okay? It's 150 per thing now, and I'm like, no. I've seen you seven times. No, uh-uh. uh She does all her own billing, so she kind of just like. When sends you the bill when she remembers, and then you pay. It like, stresses what me you out. Came on. It stresses me it's out. Solar. Um, no, no. She doesn't charge you in the office? Because when I was no. going in the office, I would swipe my card. She's but like, like, I'll send you a bill. I'm like, okay. And then I go in my email and pay with Apple Pay. Okay, then you're fine. I guess, but she hasn't sent me a bill this entire remind, year. Just remind her. Because, um, oh, I did last time. I said, hey, did you process it with my new insurance? Did it go through just fine? She's like, you know, actually, I haven't had a chance. I love her. And I'm like, I love her so much. Girl. Yeah, I like her. Money freaks me out. Yeah, it freaks me out too, but like it helps me relax seeing someone not so freak out when they're the ones owed the money. Like I'm like, oh. I guess, but like what if she's like here and then suddenly for some reason something big happens now I don't have the money and I have to pay you and I still want to keep I know, but it didn't change. Okay. It didn't change. I I, I catastrophize. 
Um, but no, anyway, anyway, anyway. Ray of Light? I'm glad, well, I wanted to do a little oh. conclusion about the series. Oh, I'm, so, I, I'm glad you, you had such a reaction to it. I cannot wait for your reaction to book series three. I hope they don't split series three into two. That's a big fear of mine. Oh, if that happens, I'm done. I'm not watching. I'm out. No. Mario, I'm out. out of my control. I will talk to you about the books, but no, I cannot wait another two years to get a satisfaction to this. Well, I mean, you're going to read the books. You've already committed to it on the podcast. But the books will take me six months. I, that's what I just said. I'll talk to you about the books. I don't think books. the books will take six months. That Mario, what I'm saying is I will discuss the books with you, but I will not discuss the show with you. If but they even- split it into two seasons... These people hate me. <laughs> but then you know what happens. So now you just have that to look forward to versus trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. I have had such a visceral reaction to the show that I don't think I can deal with it for another two years. I'm really <laughs> not. I just don't. But what if they do it like they did with um, with The Good Place and they just split it like five months apart because they have to... They have to, I, have to the... see, I, I have to see what happens in the first half of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm mad at Grey's Anatomy. They did the same thing. I'm so excited. I'm super pissed about Grey's. I loved it. So good. Like, I loved this season. And then they split it. They're like, see you back in March. What? I could have waited. <laughs> Fuck you. I am so excited for seeing, like, the villain of the series. Because he still hasn't been seen. Um, <laughs> My brain just exploded a little bit. I'm so sorry. Because all I thought was no one's worse than Mrs. Coulter, but you're like the villain. And I'm like, the fuck? Yeah. Um, I mean, there, listen. I don't know if he does things worse other than the fact that he's been oppressing multiple universes listen. for millennia. Listen. I will. Mm, yeah, they can't split the last book into two seasons. I won't do it. I, on principle, I won't. This is the end of the world as we know it. This is literally the retelling of Adam and Eve, and you expect me to wait? No, I'm not okay with that. I'm just going to read the book, and we can discuss the book if they do that. I'm so serious. Like, I'm so sorry to be this bitch, but no. This show is insane. I don't know how it hasn't gotten more... It's like Lovecraft to me. Like, I don't know how every black person in America hasn't seen Lovecraft. Because every black person in America doesn't have HBO. Sure. No, but fine. I feel like it's such a bad channel for it to be on because HBO is fucking expensive. It definitely is. And I feel like you should be able to be like, submit your driver's license and it says you're black so you can get HBO free to watch this. This show is like the best thing for black people. It's all about how you really are magical. Like, please watch it. I'm so sorry. I convinced two people to watch it this weekend. Uh Uh-huh. Because it's so good. And they're black. And I was like, this this was made for you. Like, as much as I like it, it's perfect for you. Like, literally. And they all are watching it right now. And they texted me, like, oh, my God, I started. I'm so excited. Work. I'm glad. They can split season three into two I parts. hope they don't. I really oh, hope I'm they don't. Oh, I'm having a heart attack thinking about Because, like, there's it. two major things that happen in book three. Mm-hmm. And I can see them focusing one on each season. Or one season on each thing. No. Then I need to read the books. Because I can't. I won't commit to it. I'll watch it years later when I'm over it. Mm-hmm. That's when I'll watch it. I'll be like 45. Be like, you know what? I guess I should finish this. Argument. When it's all out. Yeah. When it's all out. And I've had time to calm down. Yeah. This is why I don't finish a lot of things. So I get so invested. This is... Uh, I'm just so excited. You're seeing the worst side of me. Yeah. Daniel did it to me the other night. He's like, we never finish Handmaid's Tale. And I was like, I can't. I'm so angry about it. Like, I cannot finish it. I don't want it to end. But also, fuck everybody in the show. Once it's over, will you finish it? I'm trying to convince myself to finish it now. Are they still producing it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. I'm trying to convince myself to finish it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Daniel, I think, is waiting on me. I think he wants to finish it more than I do. But it makes me so fucking mad. Mm -hmm. When Offer did not get in that van, I was like, you bitch. I was pissed. I was mad. We're gonna finish the, the. We're gonna finish it, guys. Don't worry. She's just mad right now. No, uh, no, he's no. I won't. If you they committed split, to reviewing this show with me on the podcast, you didn't tell me that they might split it into two. Seasons. I didn't. I don't know if they will. No. That's just a fear. I committed of to watching three seasons. Of you his did Dark not. Materials. You committed to watching his Dark Materials Listen, and reviewing. You it can with talk me. as much as you want. You can't make me do shit. <laughs> the podcast is over, guys. Absolutely. <laughs> Good. <night. laughs>
It's a good show. It's a good show. It's a great show. She made it sound like it's awful. No, it's not. It's so good. You get, clearly, you get so fucking invested. Like, look at me. I can't stop thinking about it. I feel like my eyes are going to pop out of my head. It's really good. It's so good, but it's so good that, like, I fucking hated it so good. Like, it, you know, like, when something's really cute and you want to punch it in the face, like, that's not a normal reaction. That's like, a not. cute, like, little, oh, you're so cute. I've never felt that before. Oh, I, Kim and I talk about it all the time. I feel that way. Like, it's so cute, I just want to punch it. Because you want it to stop being cute so that you stop having this, like, feeling. Like, you're going to squeeze it. To, oh, my God. Like, it can't exist anymore. It's so cute. My heart can't handle it. It's the same way with the show. Like, I cannot watch it anymore. My... My psyche is damaged. It broke me. <laughs> oh, my God. The drama. The absolute the drama of it all. That's what it is, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm loving it so far as a, as a longtime fan of the books. Like it's it such too. a great adaptation. I, I think everybody should watch it. It's really good. It is so good. I'm just really invested. <laughs> Maybe too invested. I can't talk about it anymore. Can, can we do where we lights now? Sure. <laughs> Is there something else you need to talk about? No. Oh, well, actually, yes. Okay. I have changes from the books. Okay. So, um, I've kind of mentioned some of these, though. Lee and Mrs. Scorsese never... Or Lee and Mrs. Coulter never meet. Mm-hmm. Um, John Perry doesn't die that way. Um, one thing I was really upset about, mm-hmm. and they hinted at it with his comment, and I thought they were just going to cut it, but at the end of the book... Um, he is met by two angels, Baruch and Bothlamos, and they're they're Who the ones. Who? Will. Will. Okay. Will is met by two angels, um, Baruch and Bothlamos, and they're the people who tell him you need to go to Lord Asriel because he did not get to talk to his father at all, mm-hmm. and like we're going to take you to Lord Asriel, and she's like, no, he's like, no, I have to save Lyra, and then you can, I will go there, but you have to help me get Lyra, mm-hmm. and so they go off to go rescue Lyra, and that's how the book ends. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was really upset not to see them uh, because they're just very important characters, but also well, one of them is a very important character. But also they're gay angels and I love them. Can I ask you about the Spectre? Yeah. How did you feel seeing them? Is that what you expected them to look at? Look like? I had no real Understanding. visual of what it was like in my head. So I think it's a great like depiction. Yeah, because I struggled with... Um... Going back to Harry Potter, because it's the only other thing What's I could even... The Dementor. I struggled with the first set of Dementors, like, in book three. I was like, that's not what I thought that they would look like. But in, like, book five, when they came back, that's what I thought they should look like. Because they're a little bit more, like, defined under the mask and, like, mm-hmm. freaky looking. So I just was wondering, because I remember you were, like, you were excited to see the Spectres. Like, you couldn't mm-hmm. wait to see it. Because, I was excited. No, yeah, because you'd read about it, but I guess you didn't have a visual. I didn't have a visual. I just wanted to see how they do it. It's just like the Malefa. Um, that's something that's coming in the next season, hopefully. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see how they portray them, because it's a really weird Yeah, feature. I just never asked you if it, like, lived up to your expectation, or what your expectation was. Um, I didn't have much of one, so I was really pleased, because it was really creepy and unnerving to see this thing. The and... Spectre's a huge part of season two. Yeah, yeah. Huge. Um, although you didn't notice them at first. I had to point it out to you. Yeah, I didn't notice it. I didn't notice what it was. Um, also, I, I, like I said, I missed the part where they talk about a specter comes through. So how many worlds have been opened? A lot. Yeah, because there's a lot of specters. Well, no, no, no. They also explain this in that episode where they explain the specters. Mm-hmm. There weren't this many specters, but then when Asriel yeah. blew open the I, multiverse, yeah. that is when all the specters came flooding out and killed everybody. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I remember that. I didn't remember the conversation about, like... But there's typically not that many specters at one time. Yeah. It's usually a single specter or, like... Because that's why they have these things in place in Chitagatse where there's a specter, so everybody leaves until the specter leaves, and then they come back. The th- the scene, one of my favorite scenes, because I'm really into, like, how they technically shoot a scene. Mm-hmm. I, when something is incredible, I, like, recognize the skill behind the director. One of my favorite scenes, this season was Mrs. Coulter in the tower calling the specters to her. That was a great scene. I was, it was like, beautiful. that is fucking amazing. Like, they really, they brought it. And I had a little Daenerys flashback there, too, not gonna lie. She's got her power. Yeah. I was like, oh, too much power. Um, Dial it back crazy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I like what they kind of, how they portray her getting it, because they don't show that in the book. Yeah. Okay, um, I didn't know that. Yeah. The, somebody, one, I think in the third book, when they see that she has control of them, somebody just explains, like, they must know that if they come with her, she will provide them with more souls versus if they just eat her. Oh. Or something like that. Oh, my God. Okay. What? Yeah. 
I'm having a real odd Thomas moment. It's a book that I read by Dean Koontz. It's also a movie. It's a series. Yeah. So the the dogs that they talk about. I haven't read it. No, it's in the movie. I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. So, like, Odd Thomas is this guy that can see ghosts. Mm -hmm. And so, like, all these situations come up where he sees ghosts and different things happen. But he also can see things other people don't see. Like, there are these creatures, almost like dogs. But eventually, are you ever going to watch it? Eventually um, you find out spoilers. Eventually you find out that these are more than likely like evil spirits and serial killers from like another world. And so they come into this world and they kind of hang out in spots where there's gonna be like mass carnage or like a really evil person. Oh. And but if they if they find out that uh, Thomas can see them, they'll destroy him. So he has to like play it really cool when they're around. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I love that too. Didn't Anton Yaklin play him? Who? Anton Yeplin. I don't know who that is. He played um, the Russian guy in the remakes of Star Trek. I And watched... he died by getting smashed by a v- Jeep. I watched Odd box. Thomas, but um, didn't like it. I loved the books. I loved the books. I think they did a terrible job with the movie. Oh, really? It was one of... The, and you know me. I don't... Like, it doesn't bother me if they do a movie adaptation. It was one of the worst movie adaptations. Oh, it has really bad reviews. 38% fresh Rotten Tomatoes. And it, it was, was Anton Yeklin, rest in peace. It was a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a really, really terrible adaptation. They left out a lot. Oh. And I hardcore love those books. All of them. That's oh, a series. Mm-hmm. One is really sad. Is it two? Two is really good, but three was my favorite because it is very science and religious based. Oh, okay. Like he's at a monastery and someone finds out how to control the building blocks of the universe. Yeah. That I might like that series. It's it's very different. It's another world, but it's really good. I, um, I'm just hopeful because like, oh, sorry. I have a list still. Sorry. Go for it. It's hard for me to care because I haven't read the books. Oh my God. I'm, I'm, no, do it. I'm just like, I feel like I'm not contributing anything. That's fine. You contributed enough earlier. I promise you. Oh, okay. You. Wow. <laughs> All right. Shut up, Jessica. Uh, <laughs> Stop being so expressive, Jessica. No, no. Chill the fuck out. No, no. Keep going. It's fine. Get through your stuff. It's important. <laughs> it's I'm just an asshole. Keep going. I'm no, so you're not. Calm Absolutely. Down. Oh, my God. No, no, no. You are 100% correct. I went on for hours. It was unhealthy the it's way that fine. I talked. I'm, I'm glad you let it out. You've been holding it in for two weeks. Go ahead. Get to it. We're not the difference. As you're reading the angels is not in the book. Mrs. Coulter's manipulation is not expressed to that degree of her manipulating the magisterium um so i just really liked that and it made me like her more like i said um and then in the book mary does not interact with angelica or paolo at all Mm -hmm. um and so i even mentioned this earlier but i think we just added that to make them seem more human and less villainous because Mm -hmm. they are kids Mm -hmm. but yeah that's all i have Mm -hmm. you did beautifully it was amazing thanks i tried review everything all the time I try. I should have no opinions. I, should, I have enough opinions for everyone. I'm not saying that. I know at that all. you're not, but like it's unhealthy the it's way that I feel unhealthy. about Mrs. Coulter. No, for sure, it's insane. She's not a real person. This shit didn't happen, and I want her to be like strapidoed. So. <gasps> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Ray of lights. Let's go. Um, I got another tablet. Like a, like a cheap $50 Android tablet. Why? So I can emulate Nintendo games. Oh, cool. That is cool. So my favorite video game from like Super Nintendo or Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, I'm able to play now. But it's like a cheap $50 little Walmart tablet. I have oh, it. but it's like cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like the size of a Switch almost. Mm-hmm. But I can play my game. The yellow Switch lights are back in stock. Mm-hmm. I saw them in person at GameStop or at Best Buy. I saw them too. Are you getting one? Yes, sir. I want one. Do it. I want one. Do it. Yeah. Get it. I think I am. What are you going to play? Um, probably any Mario game I can get my hands on. Work. I feel like I should try Zelda, but that feels overwhelming. But I feel like I should still try. Well, what you can do if you don't want to pay for that game, or well, you already have it, but um, they have A Link to the Past, which is a Super Nintendo Zelda game, mm-hmm. which is my favorite Zelda game. Um, but it's, if you pay like the two ninety nine a month or $20 a year for that Nintendo online service, mm-hmm. um, you can play it for free and they have all the old school Super Nintendo games on there. Oh yeah. Like they, they have, have Super Mario World, Super Mario Kart, 
I might do that. I'll let you know when I get it so we can go through all this again because I'm not going to remember. Work. Mm-hmm. She's getting it, guys. I think I, I really want it. Daniel was like, you know you can't hook up to the TV. I was like, I don't have a TV. What does that matter? She has a TV. Y'all. I do not have a TV. No, no, no. I don't have a TV. That's Daniel's TV. He watches it all the time, and that's fine. Uh-huh. I'm not complaining. And the kids each have a TV. I don't have a TV in here. Fair. I don't get to, like, sit and veg out and do whatever I want. So I was like, why do I need to hook up to a TV? And I'm also not the kind of person that'd be like, hey, can you stop watching football? I feel like playing video games. Like, I would never do that. That feels so intrusive. What time is your football thing? I don't know. (laughs) I mean, well, we're done. It's fine. (laughs) I don't care. I'm worried about doing Daniel's schoolwork. We're not done. We have to do a quick intro. Oh, my God. Okay. Can we just be like, it's amazing? (laughs) It was amazing? It's fine. Let's start. Uh, My rave lights are easy. Um... My sister-in-law just really helped uplift me yesterday, and it was just great. I had an issue with, like, Danny and his teachers in school. Mm-hmm. And they were just really supportive. And Damaris was like, I'm sorry, I just don't see anything wrong with Danny. And she said, maybe I'm just, like, a really biased VP, and he can do no wrong. And then Roxy started, one of them, sorry, I can't remember who it was, it was like, hashtag protect Danny at all costs. And it just, like, Aww. made my heart sore. They're just such amazing sisters to have. I'm glad. Yeah. And someone at the nail shop was like, is this your best friend? To Damaris. And she was like, yeah, I guess. That's so Damaris. It is. And I was like, yeah, I was like, you know, we're sister-in-laws. So sure. I guess after all this time, we are best friends. Fine. It's like, but you're not my best friend. And she was like, yeah, it's it's weird. And I was like, yeah. (laughs) And then we ended up getting the same nail colors. So it's like, I don't even know. Like we have matching boots now. And I bought her these really beautiful earrings. And I was like, I really want them too. She's like, well, order them. I was like, no. I was like, it's getting weird now. Like we have matching boots. Our nails match. And then we have matching earrings. I was like, it's getting, like, I still need to see different people. You are different people. Yeah. It just, it feels weird because we're kind of always together now. That's not a bad thing. Should I talk about my... No, I will talk about my therapist breakdown after I've had a therapy session and decide what I'm going to do. Oh, okay, work. Yeah. Work. Um, I mean, that's not really a ray of light. No, it's not, but it was, it's a story to be told for sure. Definitely. Yeah. But, um, do you have anything else to add before no, we go? I'm good. All right. I'm well, gravy. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a minute. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I'm, I am like 35 years old, so I still use old lingo. I think cool is still a fun word to use. I say cool all the time. When I grew up, that was like the real slang was cool. When oh. I was in, in elementary school. I think the thing I say for cool is nice. Yeah, that's a very like ni- late late 90s, early 2000s thing. Nice. That's yeah. what, like, Chris and I say nice to everything. Yeah, I say cool a lot. Um, but, yeah, we'll um, catch you guys next time. Thanks for listening. Let us know what you thought of His Dark Material Season 2. Were you as passionate about it as Jessica was? If you were, Let please email know. me so that I don't feel alone in my psychosis. <laughs> we need to have you on the show for episode or for Season if 3. If you hated Mrs. Coulter as much as I did, please commit and send an email. I, I cannot be alone in this. <laughs> Mario is just like nostalgic for this series and so excited that it came to screen. Mrs. Coulter's terrible. I really like her. I'm fine. Great. I know what kind of person you are now. Okay. Yeah. Good. Great. Great. Nice. Look out, bitch. Cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Um, please like, rate, review us on on Spotify, podcast, Apple Podcasts, all that shit. We're on YouTube, pa- Pandora, all, everything. Look, if you can just type in the name of the podcast, it'll pull up. We're there. Just find like it. it. Yeah. Email us at I'mVeryPassionatePodcast at gmail dot com if you want to let us know about your feelings about Mrs. Coulter or how crazy I sound talking about Mrs. Coulter. That that should be a fun email too. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get to the point where we get hate mail. Oh my god! <laughs> I think that'd be great. I'll write one for you. No, oh, I love that. Please do. <laughs> You're a fuckly bitch. Yeah. Okay. It, and challenge accepted. I am. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you guys so much for listening and we'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye.